Hey, 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 guys, what's up? Look who we have here, Paul and the infamous Little Pierre. How are you, Paul? I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm so glad that you're able to join us. You're, I mean, we're in totally different time zones right now. I guess really not that different, yeah. huh? An hour? No, yeah, we, they don't have, um, Amazonas time doesn't have, um, uh, uh, I can't think of the word for it now. Uh, Day -day. Day -day time. Yeah, but they do do, I think it's Sao Paulo and other big cities are doing it, but they don't do it here. Um, mm -hmm. Are you eating a cookie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he likes his cookie. He's like, yeah, definitely. Well, Paul, I'm so happy that you're able to join us today. Um, I mean, honestly, when Mob reached out to me and he's like, I want you to talk to Paul. I was like, yeah, man, anytime. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Uh, it's been a fun day today. Creeny's been uh, uh, cleaning a lot around the house and helping out a lot. And we've been working a lot more better as a team around the house. So that's been good. Uh, we had a roller coaster, man. We had a roller, real big roller coaster. Her family had been so amazing. They've yeah, been great. They they've helped out. They've been just in, in terms of helping with the marriage and everything else. They've been wonderful. So, oh, that's um, awesome. So right yeah. now everything's on a high. Things are getting a lot better. Things are moving in a positive direction. So you've been back in Brazil, uh, America. Things are getting getting bad. I mean, I think I said obvious. Things are going really bad, really fast. Uh, so here, you know, uh, country, culture, her family, everything. Things are getting a whole lot better. He's uh, adjusting pretty good for right now. Now, unfortunately, yeah, I'm talking about you. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, before we got here, her green car got stolen out of our car. So I figured we should go to the embassy and get a boarding foil. I figured it'd be simple, but the embassies are actually closed because of COVID. So we got to wait till they open up unless it's an emergency. But hopefully they'll get that taken care of soon. Um, so we'll be able to get that taken care of and get all squared away. Hopefully by the time we, you know, if Ethan is born here, which it looks like he's going to be born here, um, we'll do it at the same time we get his passport and citizenship all taken care of. We'll do everything at the same time. Well, you had someone ask in the chat already, is Ethan due in January? No. Ethan is due. His original due date was February 14th, which I thought was hilarious. Green didn't get it because actually in Brazil, Valentine's Day is uh, different uh, than here. Um, so she had no idea February 14th was Valentine's Day. I thought it was incredibly cute. But no, he's due uh, in February. February. Nice, man. So we get to you get to be a dad all over again. It seems like you and Karini are in a good spot. In there. You said it's a roller coaster, though. When you say roller coasters, that obviously yeah. means that you have your ups, but you have your downs. Yeah, it's a lot of ups and downs, man. It really, really is. But like I said, um, we tried, you know, with our marriage. You know, with our, if we had camp marriage counseling, we had therapy, everything else. I always went. I had two different ones I went to every single week. Karini wasn't big on therapy. She didn't like it. Didn't really help. Um, so we came back here, and her family helped out a lot with that. Um, so they talked to her, and they talked to me. And we were able to uh, get things taken care of and be in a good uh, good place here. Um, it's been a lot more positive. I still talk to my, my counselor there every now and again on the phone. Um, but the biggest thing was we needed somewhere where Karini could talk and she could get the help and stuff. That, and her family's been great for that. They've been absolutely amazing um, and a whole lot better place for us all around. That's awesome. So it was obviously a lot easier for you to adjust to living life in Brazil than it was for Karini to live life in America. Yeah, I, I've been through a lot. I've been some, I've been in some rough places before. So um, what we're actually living at, I guess they call it the red zone. Uh, it's, it's a very, very bad in the town. Ubers cancel. We had one Uber. As soon as we got out of the car, they he literally just sped off. He yelled at Karini and Pierre, get out of the car, and they just sped off with stuff still in the car. Just just sped off the Uber left. Uh, couldn't she couldn't get, get her stuff out of the car. Because he was scared, I guess, that he was gonna get robbed or murdered or something. Um, I mean there's been some stuff here happened before. We've had uh, when I came back to America in between I think it was after before the ninety days season one or two, I forget which one. But I went back to America, uh, I think maybe, actually, no, maybe for the tell-all part, too. I don't know. Uh, but uh, someone was murdered right off front. But it was over drugs and stuff. So it was drug-related. Drug yeah. yeah, it was drug-related. And before that, somebody got beat in the head with a baseball bat. But it was it was all, like, most of the stuff was, like, drug-related. You know, we're not involved in the drug community. We just kind of stay to ourselves. But, like, we've had more and more and more, you know, 
issues recently. So we're trying to do a little bit different options of things to say, you know, where to stay, where to live. Um, you know, we'd love to, you know, to have a life in America and be positive with the kids. You want to get down from it? play with toys? Okay, go ahead. Uh, but the big thing is we, uh, you know, uh, we want to make sure we're in a good place where uh, she she feels happy. She feels great. And she loves America, too. She misses her family. You went down and get a cookie? You get a cookie? You got a cookie. Uh, so, and, and like I said, Pierre's doing good. I, I feel bad for her. We're going to try to get her funding. It's like in America, we had health insurance, so it would pay for uh, all of her treatment and everything. Um, here, we don't have medical insurance that we had in America. So private hospitals have no pain medicine, no nothing. So we're doing some stuff, trying to up our income enough to pay for that, which is going to be astronomical. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to pay because I don't want her to go through pain. She's like, oh, I can probably go through this. Like, no, last time was really bad. I think you at least need to get uh, pain medicine and, you know, private room and better things. So we're working on some things. I'm doing some things on the Internet, uh, trying to boost our income up so we have enough income to pay for the, the hospital there. Uh, so far, it's looking pretty positive. Here's well, the thing. You so had somebody who positive. asked in the chat, um, Shannon Van asked, how is that easier than living in the United States? Which part? I guess with, I, I think she's referring to the different, um, somebody taking off in the Uber and somebody getting shot outside of the place. Um, you said you as know, long as you're United not. States, we, we had, we got, like I said, someone broke in our car and stole her, her green car stuff. So we were, we were in a better place in the United States. It was, I guess, a rough, not the roughest part of Louisville, but there was a lot more crime there than other parts of the city. <laughs> Sorry, she's up here waving and stuff down here. He's okay. Uh, no, America is, it's an ideal place for it to be, but there was so much stuff going on behind the scenes uh, with us. Uh, things was going really bad. There's stuff that happened uh, during production. We shut down production. It was so bad. Uh, you know, we ended up having to go to a mental health facility. Um, at one point I'll say, I'll leave it at that. Um, but you know, here, you know, she has her family and things are a lot better. Uh, right. so like I said, we, you know, TLC and Sharp were absolutely amazing. Um, when we were here, they're seeing things, how things were going. Um, but, uh, she just needed some time off from everything else. Uh, and they've been great. Like I said, you remember correctly, I think it was, uh, the other way tell all, I think she wasn't in it at all. And then this recent tell while we both weren't in it because of so much stuff was going on. It was just crazy. Um, but it was, uh, it's tough for her. I think, you know, um, being pregnant, different countries and everything else. And she's You're just still trying life to on TV. Out. Yeah. Being on TV. And so I think she's still trying to figure out who, you know, who she is and everything. Um, but then, like this week, she's been great. Uh, she's been really positive. Doing a lot more stuff. She's been helping out around the house. Um, you know, me, her, and Pierre, we're going out doing some stuff. We're, it's been really positive here here lately. Um, like I said, her family's in ton of change right now. They're, we're, she's going to go back and see them for Christmas. They're coming back here. And uh, her family lives right next door. So they literally, right over here is her family. And then also right downstairs is her family also. Uh, so they're surrounded by our family. So when we have problems, um, there's no police involved. We just, I just call our family and say, look, we're having problems. Her family comes up. And, you know, if things get too bad, I go to a hotel. Pretty plain and simple. I'll go to a hotel until things go off, then I come back. Here, you play cameraman. What are you doing, buddy? So the family <laughs> acts as a better referee than, of course, contacting the authorities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her family's great. Her family's great. And they have her best interest at heart. I mean, that's all that matters. Uh, so they've been great. Hey, hey Karini. Pierre, he's having a good time. Your phone's been dinging, by the way, sweetie. Oh, hi, Karini. Karini, they say hi. You come say hi. Come here, say hi. Come say hi. Come say hello. Uh, come say hello. Come on, it's okay. Let's just look down and say hello. Look down. You say hello. Hello. Hi, Karini. How do you like it? In, how do you like it here? How do you like it? In Brazil? I love it here. It's my family. Your family's here. You're happy. You're so much happier. Miss America. Miss America. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But it's better. Here. Yeah, I think it's a lot better for her mental health here too than anything else. Um, yeah. And for your mental health too. Yeah, I, you know, happy wife, happy life. That's well, just the best way at it. You, we best have a question from a Terry G, and they want to know: Did Paul get a job there? I do a lot of stuff over the internet right now, um, which has been great. Um, and I've had some things here that I, I've been doing. Um, I got a lot of opportunities uh, in the United States. I can do when I'm physically there um, right now until we get back. 
I guess I got bills on hold. But I am able to do a lot of things on the internet um, to make money and income for the time being, which has been very productive with supporting everything um, and allowing her to relax. Hey, Bonnie, how are you? Hi, Hi Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, her family's over here visiting. And Hi. you also said, too, by the yeah. way, you're doing a lot of things on the internet. You've been doing videos for Mom Channel 3. Yeah, I'm a new channel for, uh, yep, you know, and then, of course, we do other things, we do, uh, you know, individual videos, we do sites like Cameo, Talkie, Starsona, Celebrity BM, uh, all them, and there's some other things that are on the internet, we do promotions, things like that, um, and there's some other stuff we're working on, it's pretty exciting, and like I said, that's what I'm going to do when I, once I get, I get back. Um, a lot of stuff I wasn't going to do, you know, like my dad right now, he's actually, uh, his company's pretty much shut down, he's not doing anything right now, this whole COVID thing, he's got everything shut down. I was just crazy, which is remarkable to me. I mean, one thing I, I noticed here, you know, in Manaus here, everyone wears masks. Everybody has, you know, temperature check and everything like that. We went on the boat. No one wore masks, no social distancing. That was kind of intimidating. We had a, a suite we could be in. But once we got the ton and jeans, now ton and jeans originally when the coronavirus hit, ton and jeans hit really, really hard. Uh, 20 people died very, very fast. Uh, very, very fast. And you would think, you know, with all that stuff and all the crazy that happened, it'd be pretty scary. Um, when I went there, no one was wearing masks. Very few people social distancing. Very few people wearing masks. Maybe like five people a day I see wearing masks. Maybe one or two people a day I see social distancing. Now, in the hospital, they've only had, they only have now one person in the hospital with COVID. That's it. Since June. That's all they have. Uh, they have 52 people staying at home because they think they might have it. But no deaths, only one person in the hospital. That's it. And they're not doing any precautions in months. It's well, wild. They got people going up and down the river from, from Colombia to uh, Venezuela coming in there, up and down from Manaus, constantly coming in. Uh, it blew me away. It really surprised me. I thought it'd be I thought it'd be like hospital be full of people, people be dying left and right. Well, I was shocked. They and I'm curious because when we see you on the show, you seem like you're pretty like, I, I mean, it seems like Karini is a lot more relaxed than you on some of the kind <laughs> of, you like to sanitize and make sure that everything is clean she's and good to go. So, yeah. In real, in real life, she's actually worse than me. She's overly sanitized her hands. She's always on mask. When Pierre got sick and ton of change, she wouldn't go in the hospital. So I'll meet him with hospital. That's right. Yeah. I, I go with him. Uh, <laughs> I go with him. I was like, shut up. You talk too much. I go to the hospital all the time. I'm sorry, I went to the hospital with Pierre when he got sick. And uh, in time of change, we were in the hospital. We were seen in about five minutes. Uh, he got a, an injection and some medicine, and then he was fine. His fever went down. It was just like a bacterial infection. But he gave him a, a shot of penicillin and something for the fever, and Pierre was fine. He, he was A-OK. -okay. Well, and as far as, I mean – that's good. As long as everybody's healthy, that's the best way to go. Yeah. As far as you navigating your life over there, you know, in the Amazon, are you learning to speak the language? Are you learning? Uh, language is hard. I'm actually, when it, it's funny, when we deal with travel um, or like hotels or flights or boats or anything here, I'm the one that does all the logistics. So anytime we have a boat situation, I deal with the logistics. I'm going down the dock. I'm thinking, finding the taxi. I'm finding the boat. I'm finding the flights. I do everything, and I do that without fully speaking Portuguese. Um, it's it gets difficult sometimes. I find somebody speaks English, have them help me out. Um, but yeah, going down the Amazon River, I didn't think in my life I'd be doing that. Going to Amazon River and doing that—that's something else um, that I discovered here uh, that was absolutely amazing. Is uh, before I was on the TV show, uh, I had like a world. Of worse, you know, people see me. Oh, he has mental problems. Yeah, I had a lot of bad. I have ADHD, OCD. I had really bad, crippling, generalized anxiety. My anxiety was very, very, very bad. I couldn't leave the house. Couldn't leave the house. Couldn't do anything. Um, it was just terrifying. Uh, constant panic attack, anxiety attacks. Which first time I had an anxiety attack, I thought I was going to die. I thought I was dying. I didn't know what it was. Uh, very, very, very scary stuff. Same thing, you know, panic, anxiety, all that stuff. Um, so then. Uh, I heard a story of somebody else that traveled internationally and when they travel internationally uh, it solved their problem which you would think you know being you're scared to leave the house and you leave the country by yourself you would just totally shut down your panic and anxiety would go crazy right 
no. Once I came here, uh, my anxiety and panic stuff went, went down. Like, I have, like, very few panic attacks. Never a full attack, but very few panic anxiety attacks. Uh, I don't need the medication and stuff for it. My anxiety and stuff calmed down. My first trip here, they had me. Uh, I had a prescription of Klodipin, so I had all kinds of stuff and never needed the Klodipin. Uh, they gave me a thing of Percocet for my kidney stones. Never needed that. I took that. I passed kidney stones here. I passed gallstones. I didn't know you could pass gallstones, but oh apparently you can. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not pleasant. But uh, I passed gallstones being here. That was my last trip to the Amazon. Uh, I was coming back. I drank a whole lot of, uh, it was like lemon juice and other citric stuff. And then uh, it hurt bad, man. It, was, it hurt terribly bad. Yeah. Oh. Went to the hospital, flew back to America, got an ultrasound. My doctor, because I had an emergency flight back, because they thought I had to do a, do a surgery, get my gallbladder taken out. Went to my American doctor, and he said my gallbladder was empty. I passed all the stones. I was, I was shocked. Yeah, I was shocked. Because I had a, my ultrasound in Brazil. I had all the stones. We got here. I, I passed them all because it, it hurt really, really bad. And the pain just stopped. I said, yeah, my pain stopped. Like, you, know, you know, in between travel and me here, the pain was really bad. And it stopped. And then when they, uh, they ultrasound, I mean, they didn't find any stones. So remarkably, I actually passed them. See, and that's so insane to me that, you know, that you have like anxiety and, you know, um, you're naming all of these things, but yeah. it just, that's so curious to me because you wouldn't think that somebody who gets this highly anxious would ever put themselves on a reality TV show. Yep. And I learned a lot being in here. It's like, I found one thing, uh, that actually helps with my anxiety and stuff, which is shocking was apparently bananas helps with my GI tract and my, um, uh, and my anxiety. So I didn't know that either. I had no idea. I didn't really eat a whole lot of bananas in the United States. Here, bananas are constantly. And um, I don't my GI doctors. I, personally, I was taking all kinds of GI medication. I had all kinds of like problems with my GI tract, man. I'm, tons of pills. Well, I ran out my first trip, but I didn't really need them. So this guy, you got to give him a spoon. <laughs> He's, hey, he loves his spoons. Uh, so then I, the GI doctor asked him to die. He's like, oh, it's because you're eating so many bananas. I'm like, why didn't you just tell me to eat more bananas and give me all these prescription drugs? <laughs> Why well, you just tell me that would solve the problem, you know? Uh, but that actually solved a lot of stuff too. Well, Paul, I have so many questions for you myself, but I'm so curious. Would you mm -hmm. mind if I just filtered through and let some people call in and maybe they can ask you one question as long as everyone's respectful? Yeah, that's fine. If, 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 don't with? worry. If somebody isn't respectful, I promise you, if somebody goes way out of the wall, I will just drop them. <laughs> I have no. I ha hey, listen! I got the button. When you get the button, you get to do what you want. I like the button. The button. All right, let's let's try this and see what we get. Okay. Hi, Libby. Hi. How are hi, you? Hi, hi Paul. Hi, hi, Adam. Hi. Here, Pierre. Here's a cookie there. Hi. hi. There go. How's everybody doing? Good. Oh, all right. You Did involved? you have a question? For Paul? I'm good. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I missed the very beginning. Are you? in south america or a, where i'm announced right staying now staying there for a while are you in yeah green unfortunately together? yeah unfortunately her green car got stolen right before we got here so yeah mc is closed because of covid unless it's an emergency uh, -huh. uh her not having her green car they don't consider it an emergency uh unless she's having like say a problem with her pregnancy or something like that then it'd be an emergency but right now the pregnancy is doing okay Oh, so, so she uh, is in the. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm ADD. <laughs> I'm really bad ADD, real bad. I always jump in. Um, so but so she's still in the states, and you guys are gonna. No, she's here. No, oh, she's here. Karina at the, she can't Karina get back at the in. very beginning. She can't said get back into Brazil. Oh, she's I'm able sorry. To get out. Yeah, oh, they I actually gave us a little bit of a hard time getting out of the country. They they stopped us on one of the flights because of her document situation. Um, but once she got here, you know, it's a matter of getting back in the United States. Oh, I got um, it. Yeah. She still got an approved green card. We don't have the fiscal green card. So we have to, you know, try to get from the embassy, get it what they call a boarding foil. And then with the boarding foil, she can get back in the United States. Oh, cool. Well, uh -huh. thank you for uh, answering my question. Yeah. Thank you, Libby, for calling <laughs> thank in. You. Okay. Right. Yeah. Talk to you All later. Right. All right. Well, and we'll just. Hi, Lizzie. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. So first off, I want to say, Paul, I've been watching your cameo since Master of Blackjack started ordering them. Um, oh. And they're so much fun to watch. My favorite one was when you went on the tour through the Amazon and you guys went to see the uh, traditional uh, priests and stuff. And you talked about doing the marriage ceremony. You guys should totally do that. That sounds oh, yeah, like such a perfect thing. 
Yeah. So, oh, well, hopefully I didn't spoil it. Hopefully she's not in the room. <laughs> she's um, in the other room right now. She's not okay, good. So um, I guess I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to give you like a piece of advice. What I really appreciated you see, like seeing from you through those videos is how much you said, I'm going to step away from social media. I'm going to keep things private. Yeah. Um, but there was one point in the cameo that you recently did where you brought up a test that Karini had to do during the mm. ultrasound. Um, and I just want to give you that advice that maybe that wasn't the smartest thing to do, you know, especially with what's happening before about it. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, we can see him. Yeah, can you hear me? Ah, she called in. My speaker messed up a little bit. Hold on. All right, try now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you a little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, I have my son in the background, too. He's also one and a half. Leslie, sorry, there's an echo. Yeah. I mean, the thing was, Better now? Mic off. Let me turn off and back on, see if it fixes it. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to let Lizzie. Um, hold on a second here. Go back or not. All right. All right. Oh, I think it's go. gone. Okay, well, and yeah. also just to piggyback off of what Lizzie was saying really quick too, with the social media and stuff, Paul, I feel like you even now being back in Brazil, I feel like you have a, a more calm, happier head to kind of navigate as opposed to having four different cameras in your face and, you know, having a whole production team. It's probably a lot easier for you to be happy. Yeah, we, um, I, we keep all the negative stuff off social media now. Uh, which has been, I think, very helpful keeping on negative. We keep it, anytime there's some negative, uh, her family deals with it here. So rather than going on social media or anything like that, uh, her family deals with all the negative stuff and they fix the problems uh, and they help her with it. So it makes things a whole lot easier for me. And there are some pretty crazy dark things that happened. Uh, you know, there were some accusations that were made. They were totally, totally off the wall. Um, which I knew when I saw them, I was like, it's not Green's hand, right? It's not some Green would say. So what I did was I took the accusations I had a Brazilian translator so trains on them, sent to her mom and dad, which I knew she would then confront Karini on. And then Karini would find out what's going on. And then eventually, uh, we had a Brazilian church group uh, that I was trying to get her to go to more and more um, in Louisville. Uh, so finally, she reached out to one of them and they went out there. The, the poor guy waited for three hours at a park. And then finally, she was able to get out with what stuff she could out of there. She actually left like some jewelry and some other stuff of hers that was still there. She never got out of there. She got to his car and got back. And then I gave, uh, you know, him the security codes and stuff, the house. But once she left, I changed the security codes. I changed everything. So then I gave him the access codes and everything. And then, you know, uh, Karini and Pierre went in the house. They stayed there until I got back from Brazil. Um, and then we had to deal with the whole thing with the lawyers, get everything cleared up. But it was a mess. I mean, she she didn't know what was written. She went there. They say, you know, she talked to them. They wrote down much stuff. They said, OK, is everything on here? I guess. And she said, OK. And she signed it. She didn't know what they wrote. She had no idea what they wrote. Uh, right. Between that and the police report, it was just just like, what is this? You know, what kind of stuff is this? Is court, you know, accusations and things like this is nothing that she would accuse me of. This makes no sense. It's not even her handwriting. And yeah. uh, I said in the very beginning and I was right. But I have a question for you. A lot of people comment about you and kind of your and Karini's storyline, and they ask how there's, you know, there's a there's an old expression where there's smoke, there's fire. And a lot of people ask, how are there this many things that kind of build up for you? But it seems like you guys, again, it seems like you guys are happy and you're in a good place. So it just, it just Yeah, accident. in Brazil with her family, in Brazil with her family um, is the best thing uh, here right now. Uh, they've been, like I said, extremely helpful. Uh, her mom and dad have been great. Her brothers and everybody's been great. Um, they help us out here, you know, only with, so with, with Pierre, but with her and everything else. Um, and you didn't have a whole lot of help in America, right? Mom did. Mom, mom helped when she could. Mom was there to help when she could. Um, financially, uh, we were, we've actually been financially 100% our own uh, the entire time I think we, in America. Mom helped out with the dog food. And then what else? A few other things. But we actually got a house. Uh, we are renting a house uh, there. I was hoping to buy it from the landlord. We don't want to sell it. We have a house in America and we have an apartment here. Uh, so I'm currently juggling both of those. Paying bills for two homes in two countries is not easy. Uh, it's quite expensive, actually. Um, but we have a, a 
a three bedroom, one bath house in America. Then we have this, um, this place here. Um, it's got, um, a re a redid this is to be the original was the master bedroom we're in now. This is actually a living room. So I made a nice living room for the nice big blue sofa like she always wanted in here. Um, then we have a kid's room upstairs and we have, um, our, our bedroom right directly above. Uh, then we have our bathrooms in here. We actually got, we got three little tiny shower bathrooms. Uh, the nice thing here is we never fight over a bathroom in America. We're, we're always, you know, uh, you have one bathroom, you're going to fight over it, but it's just, you know, we're getting there one day at a time, but it's each country, you know, we have our pros and our cons, you know? Right. Right. Which makes, which makes a lot of sense. It, I, I mean, okay. So now you're you're back in Brazil. You're obviously in a better place. Um, you have a lot of help from Karini's family that helps you guys um, navigate your relationship, which is better because it allows you to have communication. So that's that's a positive. But as far as reality TV, it seems like that sometimes played a role in anything that might kind of go bad. Would you ever entertain the idea of being a part of a reality TV network again? I mean, we still technically, we never, like I said, we never got let go. We got kind of like put on hold of things. And the thing is with them, um, we're not like a lot of the other couples on the show. Um, production learned that very quickly. Uh, so they always... For them, it was try to de-escalate things. So they had, we had counselors, we had therapists, um, we had people, you know, special people to help us out with situations, things arose. Um, they weren't ever trying to create drama with me and her. They were trying to de-escalate things. With things, something would go, you know, off the charts, they would try to make things better. Um, so they weren't actually trying to steer up drama with us. They were trying to steer things down. Uh, trying to think, keep things as good as best as possible. So if something was going off the rails, they were trying to calm things down. They weren't ever trying to make things more difficult and make things more complicated. People were like, oh, well, TLC and Sharp, they just want to you know, fill up the drama. I was like, no, they just, I mean, we had so much random stuff that happened um, on camera. You know, some of the stuff was so crazy, they never showed it, you know, on the show. I mean, there's some pretty crazy stuff that we filmed. Um, right. Really, really, really outlandish stuff that got filmed. Um, they got cut. So um, we had a lot of crazy times. There was an incident where Karini actually ran off. It wasn't me. She, she actually ran off on one scene, uh, just took off. Um, and we had to get her and then calm her down and everything else. So, Which is true. We, we usually know you to be the one who would run off. Yep. And Gary, to me. You eating your cookie again? It looks like he's eating three cookies. He shoves them in there. This is, it's a Gerber cookie, though. First started doing it, it made me scared, made me nervous, but... He gets them down, he chews them, and he swallows them. He, made me, he makes me nervous when he does it. Makes me scared. Oof. Well, I think we have a, I mean, as long as you're respectful, maybe we have another caller to ask you a question. Okay. And again, Paul, don't worry. If somebody comes in and they, they start chopping at you, I promise I will take them down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, AC in here is hot. Hi, Sad Star. Hi, Adam. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi. Hi. Good. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for, um, being here to talk to us, uh, to all of us. Um, yep. just wanted to give you like a message from the bottom feeders at discord. They just wanted to tell you that they love you. They love Karini. Oh, they love Pieri and they love Pieri the most. So actually <laughs> Pierre is my favorite, um, cast <laughs> member on 90 day fiance. <laughs> so <laughs> He runs like me, apparently. We just found that out. I didn't realize really? it. Really? If he runs just like you, when he gets mad, he, he'll, he'll like, he's got a spoon right now. He'll throw down what he's got. He'll get mad or run off. Earlier, he got mad because Crean took one of his spoons to eat her uh, her dessert. He went, in the, he went in the kitchen and flipped the trash can and just went nuts. Are you talking <laughs> about me? I'm talking about you. I'm telling on you. Hey, look at him. Cute. He's so cute. Um, I just wanted to ask. Oh, sorry, sorry, Adam, go on. No, 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 go ahead, Sad Star. Um, just wanted to ask if you watch any other shows on TLC, and if you have a favorite couple that you like to follow on, um, on Ninety Day Fiance from the spinoffs. Gosh, um, a lot of us talk. I talk to a lot of cast members you probably wouldn't think I would talk to, uh, mm -hmm. but I talk to quite a few cast members on the show. Uh, they reach out to me. We talk back and forth. Um. And uh, sometimes we have similar similar problems that we go with, go through, and we're, we're dealing with uh, something can relate to each other. Um, 
some people don't have as, as good a time with production as I, as I have. Uh, we got really, really blessed. Um, like I said, with a lot of really good people um, with the network and things with their stuff. Um, but no, I, God, it's a hard thing. I talked to a lot of people. Um, I know Dave, Annie reached out a lot. Um, uh, Angel reaches out a lot. Baby uh, girl, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe girl Lisa. I've talked to uh, Larissa. I've talked to um, quite a few of the other cast members, um, you know, and uh, we all have, you know, our ups and our downs and uh, we're all very respectful on our stuff. We don't like go leaking each other's secrets or anything. We just, a lot of cast do. A lot of people, cast members talk to each other and we, we keep our stuff private and um, it's been, you know, really good to have that positive um, positivity that we can go to for support when we need it. Um, but I mean, I like a lot of the storylines. I don't know if I really pick out a favorite, and there's so many people that I talk to and so many storylines I follow. Um, but uh, but I do like to watch this, you know, spinoffs and stuff when I can. I'm going to love it when they play Happily Ever After here in Brazil. You have to bring a wave? Can I do it? You know, wave? No? I'm going to love it when it plays in here. Let me tell you why. Um, the TLC Brazil adds in a lot of our scenes. This last season, we had a lot of footage that got cut. Probably because of the stuff going on behind the scenes, they went ahead and uh, minimized our stuff, which is understandable. Um, but TLC Brazil, they typically always add in our extra footage. So when they air us here, they're probably going to add in a whole lot of extra scenes and stuff behind the scenes that explain a lot. Um, so i got to watch for that to happen. Uh, now, being that I'm here, I can actually put on original audio. So I'll try to record the scenes um, actually while mm -hmm. I'm here in Brazil, whenever they do air it. But this is going to probably be a lot of footage of me and Karini that was never shown. Because they've actually shown a lot of scenes um, internationally in Latin America. And before the nine-day season two, there was a scene where I went crazy down by the boat docks they didn't show in America. Uh, season one, there's some scenes on the boat they didn't show. There's a lot of scenes. If you don't know that, when they air T 90 Day Fiance internationally, there's a lot of stuff that's like not put on the show, not in bonus scenes, not on cut scenes. Because that was a surprise. Because you see stuff on there. That's, you know, okay, maybe it's like a bonus scene, something like that. No, it's just like stuff that wasn't even on bonus scenes. They just totally off the wall. They just take footage and they put it in there. And I love that they do that, you know. So I'm very excited when they do have it again uh, to see all those. Yeah. Uncut yeah. And I'm huh? I said it's I not. I knew that. You also yeah. had a comment. Um, and you don't have to answer this, Paul, but someone wants to know which cast member would Paul not talk to from any of the TLC franchises? Oh. If anyone comes to mind, I think my really, really really angered me that much. Um, I mean, we have our ups and downs, a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot um, of cast members. Um, I can't I really think anybody has got me to the point where I just wouldn't talk to them. And I don't think anybody's really angered me that much. I mean, we've had some people we've had conflicts with um every now and again but i think most of the people we, we may come to peace with come to terms with um we're all on, on a good good place right now uh, but no i'm trying to think i don't think anybody right now that i really can't stand to be honest with you well, that's a good thing that means you're yeah. in a happy place yeah. that's true i have two more questions though um yeah. how is your mom how is your mom and mm. did you eat turtles again do what did you try turtles again mm -hmm. Yeah, Cranny is a big fan of turtles, so uh, I have tried a little bit here and there. Uh, but there's so many different ways. They cook it so many different ways. And Cranny actually really, really is a huge fan of eating turtle. Um, so that's one thing. They say, oh, you don't eat turtle in America. I was like, I'm from Kentucky. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, we have a whole lake full of turtles, you know. And that's one thing I've realized here, too, um, is I finally got it. Because, like, in Kentucky, you go out into, like, eastern Kentucky and somewhere in the woods and with the backwoods stuff. And I'll just say, like, hillbilly kind of thing. And uh, that's basically what, like, you know, her thing is. It's like hillbilly and the Amaz Amazonian hillbilly uh, and some of the things is the best way I can put it down there. And, like, seeing enough stuff to eat and everything else, I'm like, it's like normal or something. I feel like I'm in Eastern Kentucky sometimes, like right in the backwoods. Uh, 20 reais? Uh, let me look. Come on. I got – crap. Francis got a lot of money last night. Why do you need the money? What do you need? Because I got a, I got a bank card. Hello. Barofa? Uh, what's to go to the store down here? She can take my bank card. No. The other one? Uh, you have two? Okay. Yeah. Take any money. Any of my upstairs, feel free. You know, my money is your money, so just have at it. Uh, what was the other question? I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, how is your mom? Oh. Um, 
I'm just going to be honest about it. Um, mm. Mom ha- is having some heart problems. Uh, she had it starting a long time ago when she was in the hospital, and she's doing better now. Uh, but all the stress, everything going on, had a, did a lot, like a lot to her heart. It really hurt her heart a lot with everything going on, and it, it caused difficulty. She was off work for a very long time. Um, mm. She's doing better now. Um, but, you know, being, I think, when the chemotherapy, whenever she survived breast cancer, it really affected her heart and everything else. So, um, but she's doing better now. Uh, it's just mainly it's a big thing. It's her staying positive, staying with the stuff. So like I tell her on social media and stuff, just stay out of the negativity, you know, try to be as positive as possible. Um, yeah. As of right now, she's doing, I think, a lot more positive. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just, my, my main thing is I want her and my dad, hopefully, to, to be able to enjoy eventually their retirement and get their dream home done and everything else and all in due time. But uh, she misses us very much. She's eager for us to come back. And like I told her, you know, um, if we do come back to America, whenever we do, you know, eventually we're going to have two kids over two years old and <laughs> trying to fly a team from Brazil is going to be astronomically expensive. It's not going to be possible anymore. We won't be able to travel as much as we do. Right now we travel numerous times, you know, two, maybe two. I don't think we would travel three. I think two times a year we we'll go back and forth maybe um, for long periods of time. But we have two kids over two. It's going to be yeah. a lot harder. Yeah. A lot harder, a lot more difficult. So, but yeah, she's, yeah. she's doing better, but she was – not doing so good. Uh, mom got into, mom did have a tendency to get into a production every now and again, though. So she did. Uh, I will say, <laughs> say that. Well, somebody had to, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, she, there was a, it was like a scene at the airport. She just, she just totally ran in. It was, it was sweet. We were all crying. It was great, but um, they couldn't really use it because it just kind of broke. She broke the, the wall, the fourth wall down completely uh, and just ran in there. And uh, being a loving mother and grandma, you know, um, yeah. dragged on to us. And it was a very sweet heart moment. We were all in tears and everything else. But, um, yeah, she, mm. she she's, she's a really a great loving person. You know, um, occasionally every now and again, we, we would get into different things and arguments. Get this camera here. It's like, it's hard. Here. But uh, she's doing better now. But she had, um, like I said, some difficulties. And the main thing is her staying, you know, as unstressed as possible. She was always, of course, real scared about COVID and everything else. Um, my father was especially scared because he lost somebody with, from COVID. Um, he knew some, I think it's me, two of his friends actually died from COVID. It's his close friends that he went fishing with every single year. Um, so that kind of got them a little bit stirred up and everything too. So, but they're getting there one yeah. day. At a- Thank you right. so much for sharing this information with us, Paul. Um, again, you you are loved in the Bottom Feeders Army, and of course, you're a bar, you're a part of the Bottom Feeders Army. You're a soldier already. So, in any time, if you want to reach out to any of us, the Master of Blackjack, we're always here for you. And yeah, Pierre, you too. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll go now, okay? Thanks, Paul. Right. Thanks, Thank Adam. You. Have a nice day. We'll talk, we'll talk yeah. to you soon. Paul, somebody asked in the chat, how come you always have the camo shirt? I won't get into the reason specifically why I have it on today, but this camo shirt is actually a gift from my father. Um, it's comfortable. And I do wear it a lot. Uh, this one, uh, the Brazil shirt, was actually a gift um, for the Brazilian film crew here that we had here. And I'm very close to the Brazilian film crew here. So I wear the Brazil shirt a lot too. Uh, but yeah, the camouflage shirt is just a shirt that I wear. Reminds me of home, uh, family, things like that. So it's, you know, it's a Kentucky type shirt. And, um, you know, I, I do enjoy wearing it. Reminds me of family, things like that. And uh, like I said, the other shirts, um, the Brazil shirt we actually got from like to the film crew here. And that was one thing different than uh, a lot of the other couples. Uh, we were the one of the only couples on the show um, we had a, an international crew, like entirely international Brazil crew, numerous times where there was sometimes one, maybe at most one American was here, if that, uh, with the film crew. So we got very close attachment to the Brazilian film crew here. Um, they were wonderful, you know, on and off, you know, when we're in production, out of production. And they're cool to talk to uh, because some of them, they deal with all the filming of Animal Planet, with Discovery Channel, um, with all the other things they film around here. Some of these people that I still talk to. Uh, cause I'm going, I think I'm going to do like a little video series about the, uh, Amazon monster. So yeah, that's why I, I wear some of these shirts. They have like personal ties. So that's why I wear them. This one's more of my family results. shirts more the film crew. Uh, what other shirts, I guess blue, because blue is just a favorite color. <laughs> so I wear a lot of blue things, 
me and Cream both like the color blue. So that's why we know they have blue everything, blue shirts, blue couch, blue Christmas decorations, blue, 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 blue. Everything is blue. Um, I mean, so. listen, if you got, if I had blue eyes, I'd wear blue shirts, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have another, another person, Kennedy Monroe, who wants to know, and I think this is a great question. Are you and Karini looked at as kind of celebrities over there? We get um, looked at celebrities in both countries, well, everywhere we've, we've gone to. Um, we've had that uh, type of experience, whether we're in the United States or we're here. Um, we get looked at celebrities. That is a pretty blue dress. That is very pretty. Can I can I show it? Is that okay? You want me to show you? You look very nice. That's very beautiful. Oh, oh, that had to hurt. Are you okay? There's some ice in the freezer. Oh, I feel like something just went incredibly wrong. She just was under the stairwell and she bopped her head on the stairwell. I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt up here a little bit if you can see it. She was up here and she bopped her head on the stairwell up there if you can see it or not. Yeah. Little thing here, her head. Uh, she's oh, change the period diaper. But when you get done changing, I would love to show your dress. It looks very beautiful today. It goes well with your hair. Looks very 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 nice. After you change his diaper, I don't want. I don't want. I, I don't want to show Gary an indecent thing. You know, <laughs> God, he's eating cookies left and right. And uh, as soon as she, okay, he's he's taking off. Naked baby running through the lookout. Uh, when she gets done with him, um, I'll see if I can get her to talk for a minute, for a second. Um, once we get him changed, I'm, yeah. talk about, I'm ADHD and I get distracted and, I, and I'll talk randomly about random things. Yeah, keep me on track. No, no, no. You're hey, yeah, you're right, right here. Um, Noah. Yeah, Noah. She's trying to call him Noah. 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 Um, what was I talking about? And then whenever uh, we get, when she gets done with him cleaning, I'll see if she'll talk for a minute. Yeah, if people approach you guys in both, you said pe people approach you guys in both countries. Oh, uh, yeah, we get a lot of celebrities in both countries. Um, a lot of positivity. I've only had a few times where people were negative. It's rare. Um, very rare, but it does happen on occasion. Um, yeah, so there's some things, you know, on the TV show um, that people don't, you know, it's, it's, it's TV. I'm just going to say it's TV. I mean, I go off on some things. I do some crazy things. It's television. It is what it is. Um, most people are very, very positive. We've had a very rare occasion when people are, are somewhat negative. But for the most part, we get a lot of the, the good positive treatment on that. We get recognized all the, all the time. Here. Yeah, are you okay? It's just a diaper, buddy. Oh, he's shy. Another baby walked in here and he's upset. Uh, <laughs> territorial. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, now he's running out with them. Hey, can you come say hi real quick? Show me your dress. Riru. Let's see off here. I get her for a second. Uh, Karini. 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 Four, four, four. You good for a second? Say hello. To say hello. Please, you look really beautiful. Okay, here, you're, you're on the couch. Can I turn, tilt the camera this way? Is that okay? Can I please tilt the camera? <laughs> Just say hello. Hold on. You're around the tall. Where, there you go. Say hello. hello. Hi, Karini. <laughs> I'm sorry for it, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> no. we we, hey, we love the blue dress, too. You look great. You uh, look thank great. Thank you. <laughs> Are you excited for the new baby? Yes, I am. Oh, you're in the camera. <laughs> She's like, get yeah, that camera off of me. But I'm nervous, too. Nervous? I know it's different. Thank you. Well, if we can get the money together, we can go to the private hospital. So, Is it easier the second pregnancy right. than it has been than it was the first? Good question. Uh, is it easier for this pregnancy than it was for the first pregnancy? No. Same, same as the first? Everything's the same? Yeah. Same if as the first? Equal. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing easier? Yeah. Same thing? Yeah. Like no, crazy oh, with on. the long hair and everything too. She looks beautiful. Great, you look great, sweetie. You buy any fish? Okay. You need anything? No. If you need anything, let me know. I'll give you my card. Okay. All right. Bye. Have a good night. Right. She says bye. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I see if they're being with her family, she can go to her family's houses and visit and eat anytime she wants. So it makes things and so much easier here. We have fine drop for her too. Her too. And oh, somebody just said too, Anita Taylor said her English is great. Oh, you have no idea. She's like, I don't speak English. Like, yeah, you do. I speak very fast and I speak a lot and I have an accent and everything else. So native people from America 
have trouble hearing me and talking to me. You know, I have a lot of people, you talk too fast. I can't understand you. Everything just runs together. Uh, but she understands me. And she really does. We've had conversations back and forth. So I know she understands me. Um, so she, she really does do a lot better on English than she thinks. Um, that's why I couldn't figure out before. And I think like that, like reading and writing, it's a problem. Reading and writing is a situation with her. And when she gets nervous on things, she locks up. Um, but like I said, it's a big thing. She's like I said, reading English, writing English. It's very difficult to be a hard thing with the citizenship to get that worked out. Uh, but speaking and things like that, she's able to converse um, a lot better than she was. Because when we first met, she knew she couldn't speak any English. I, I, I talked about doing, doing surprises behind her back and everything else for her there. We'd be there with the film crew and I'm talking about doing a surprise for her with flowers. So I actually, in season one, I got her flowers. Um, and in the scene, she broke down in tears really bad and couldn't find out why I was in all of her life and all of her past relationships. No one, not a single person, not her, not her brother, no, sorry, not her, uh, not her boyfriend, never brought none of her boyfriends or anything ever gave her flowers ever, mm. even in her serious relationships. I was the first person to ever give her flowers. Uh, so she just broke down to tears. She was really, really sad, but I gave her a thing of flowers. Um, I wrote her a note and I had somebody help me. I went to the translator app, wrote her a little thing in Portuguese, like a little love letter. And then as she was six, I got her some medicine. Um, and I got her a stuffed animal and the flowers and her favorite candy and stuff. And she just broke down in tears. She just never had my do that for her. So we had some, some, some positive moments too, you know, like that, that no one really knew about, but. Right. right. And, that's, and that's the thing, too. I think it's super easy to because, you know, you've you've had moments that you've been pretty honest about. Where you've gone on social media and there's just been kind of like, let's just call it a moment of weakness where you. Might oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That. yeah. Well, things I went through on social media about, you know, I think a lot of people in that situation. Would like, you needed an outlet. All right. Um just like before when I, when I did the social media thing with the whole thing recently, I did a live, uh, I was nervous and everything else. I was like, it's just, I told her just, just say, just tell everybody what I did. Tell the world on Instagram live what I did. Cause I want to know what I did. Cause I don't know what I did. Tell everybody. And then of course the whole thing just blew out of proportions. And then we got here. Um, like I said, we've been back in Brazil. She's back here. She has the freedom to go up to her families. We don't have the accusation of the problems anymore. It's just peaceful. And then there was another incident, like I said, that happened there at the house, and I just was shattered. Um, and I think in America, there was, it was a, lot, a whole lot of different things, a whole lot of different demons that were running around, I'll say that. And here, um, she has her family. They're very in tune with, with the religion and faith. Um, they have, you know, they want her to start going to church and things like that, getting more you know, into her religion being close to her family uh, and it's, it's helping a lot. And the, like I said, in America, one of the things we did was we, I, I couldn't figure out, I tried to figure out what to do because we went to therapy. We had couples therapy and we had two different therapists and she got to a point where she rejected therapy. I was like, well, I got to figure out what we can do so we can, we can keep going positive. So I reached out on a Brazilian group. Um, it was on Facebook and I made some Brazilian friends locally in Louisville and they had like their own personal Brazilian church group um, that Karini went to weekly. Um, until COVID happened. Then COVID happened, they stopped meeting up, and then everything kind of blew out of proportions. Um, but that, the Brazilian group of church, church people that we were there were very helpful. And they helped de-escalate things a lot. When her family, you know, what couldn't be there, they helped. Um, but the COVID couldn't meet everything else. And that was the same group that helped her get out of the house and get her back to our house. Um, and then I came back from Brazil and got her and brought her back here. Um, well, and just to be well, fair, <laughs> to piggyback off of what you're saying, let me fix the mic again. Someone else called in and messed the mic up. Let me get on here and fix this real quick. I'm sorry. You're all right. All right. Uh, let me go back. All right. So I again talk. Just to be fair, so many of us have gone through 2020 and quarantine, and I don't think you're the only relationship out there that has had moments where you're just butting heads. I mean, when you're stuck together all the time, it's inevitable, especially add in a little bit of a language barrier, different cultures, communication. Yeah. That adds up. That's fair. Oh, to yeah. I mean, everyone has those problems. Oh, yeah, different yeah. attitudes, but yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. It definitely got to be a point. And like I said, she had her ups and downs. Sometimes she'd be at the house. Like here today, she's been really productive and positive. Um, there'd be times where she wouldn't leave the bedroom. Like she would just stay in bed and she wouldn't really eat or she wouldn't. Um, I'm not going to say there's other hygienic things she wouldn't do. She just would stay in the bed. 
And now here she's just, you know, positive. She's got a routine. You know, she gets up, she has a shower, she eats, she eats with her family. She's, you know, trying to cook more. She's going out and doing stuff, um, you know, being positive. She's really active with Pierre and stuff too. Uh, and that's the big thing is, you know, being interactive, you know, with everybody, her family, with me, with our children. And uh, she's in a really positive place right now, which makes things positive, more positive for me. Um, whole lot positive. You know, like I told her, if we, we keep going in a positive direction, um, we had some difficulty. Like we can't, we can't have communion in the church here because we didn't get married in a church. So I told her, you know, on our fifth wedding anniversary, if we make it to five years, if we make it to five years um, and everything goes positive, I'd love to, you know, redo a ceremony in Tonnet Sheens in the church. She always wanted a princess dress. We'll do like her, her, her dream wedding. We'll do everything again in a church and that'd be great for our five year. If we make it that How many far. years are you at right now? Three. Three. Okay. Three. And that's Three. what allowed Three. you to stay in Brazil too, right? Yeah. I can, well, even if we're not married, it's my Brazilian, I guess called green card from residency. Um, because I'm a father to Brazilian children, um, I automatically get it anyway. So at this point, so I'll be able to use that. Um, uh, what? Karini's not here. Karini's in Brenner, Brenner's, uh, uh, Bonnie's house. Casa Bonnie. Casa Bonnie. Huh? Hey, David. I, I, I have no idea what she's saying. Please come help me. <laughs> Karini. Un momento. Da David. One second. I have no idea what she's saying. What is she saying? What does she want? Go okay. No idea what's going on. <laughs> but David, he I have him here help. Uh, he's great. He was actually a production assistant. Um, we were filming, and uh, he's he's great for like he's around here. He helps out with things around the house, and he helps with translating and things like that. Um, I guess I'm still working on Portuguese. He's working on his English, but he's been great to have around. I'm sorry, I'm ADHD. I lost track of what I was talking about. No, no, no. Listen, it's like hey, that, that. That's good. It's like he he got stuck with you guys and never left. Yeah, he started with us four, and he's the thing is with David, and he helped with translating with stuff, the lawyer and stuff too, at some points. But um, we had a point where she did this exact same thing um, here in Brazil that she did kind of in America. Some things happened at one point, and uh, she went off and. Uh, he was here and helped out. So he's, he's seen this stuff happen, but then she goes, so hey, yes, Cranny's phone. Yeah. That's Cranny. But he's seen the things go bad. You know, Cranny loves me. She hates me. She loves me. She hates me. She loves me. She hates me. And, uh, she just comes a totally when she goes to one sign that she's like a totally different person, totally different. And, you know, it's a matter of when she comes over. I'm curious because, you know, obviously you're still learning Portuguese and you said it's, you know, it's, it's going to be tough and you're going to have to go yeah. through that journey. But as far as baby Pierre, is he bilingual or mostly Portuguese? We let him listen to stuff in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Uh, Creaney thinks he understands more in uh, English, in her opinion. Um, but he has, say, he has said some names in Portuguese before. So it's different names in Portuguese, like the, the children of her family. He'll learn the names and say them. So he's gotten, he's gotten better on that. Uh, saying Brazilian names, um, but Crane thinks he's, he understands more English. He likes TV shows and stuff more in English, I think, in Portuguese. We've, we've, we've found that. But there's been a couple uh, Brazilian cartoons he really likes um, on YouTube. There's a few Brazilian ones that he really, really likes. But like Disney movies, Crane so had a rant, a whole rant last night on this. Because Crane is watching Brazilian, uh, The we have Disney Plus uh, in America, and they just risked in Brazil. So she was watching the Disney Plus movies they have here. Oh, she can listen to Portuguese now. She was excited. So she put it in Portuguese, and then she quickly turned it back to English. I'm like, why did you do that? She's like, the translations are all wrong. Everything's way different. It doesn't sound the same. The translations are different. The storyline like alters everything. I'm like, really? I had no idea. But yeah, apparently she was she was upset. Like she said that when they translated the Disney translations on the songs, everything translated to Portuguese, that now she understands English, the meanings were totally different. So it was all different, she said. I had no idea. So she had a long rant about that last night. But she really, well, she's enjoying it, speaking, uh, you know, in more and more English. Yeah, no, and that's awesome, too. I, yeah. I mean, I, it's fun because it's it's always cool to focus on the positive and grow. Um, one person, one of the people in the chat asked, and I'm, I'm answer this however you'd like, but one of the people asked, um, it seems like, when you answer questions, you might say Karini, 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 but do you ever 
think that sometimes things could fall on your lap, like things. Yeah. Maybe oh yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. I, mean, yeah. I, I get frustrated near two people. I get it. I have my quirks. Me and her both have our quirks. Yeah. I have little things I obsess on. I get on and think she's obsessed and gets on. Um, we both have our quirks. Absolutely. I think sometimes we, we do things to each other and frustrate each other. I'm definitely not innocent of all that stuff. It was quite a few times when I'll go off on something um, and it would set her off too. So I get it, but we're getting, we're getting better on both. What do I do? Irritates you. You know, I'll tell you, you know, tell me and I'll work on what I, you know, you do irritates me. You know, I'll explain to her to work on communication. Um, yeah, it's communication. We're doing more and more better with English. I mean, her speaking English more and more is, is better. Uh, sometimes she gets shy. She don't talk about certain things and she'll talk to, you know, other people about it, but not me. It's like, you tell me it's a problem situation. You explain to me so I can fix the problem, make it better. Um, but no, like I said, right now, um, you know, there's some things that every now and again, you know, I might do that. I get the ear taser. So I have to catch myself every now and again and stop myself. Yeah. It's uh, a two way street. That's fair. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely two way. You yeah, know, and just to kind of um, piggyback off of what you're saying too, really quick, because we're all human just to be fair. Yeah. You know, my fiance and I just moved from Los Angeles, uh, California to, um, South Florida. And when we moved sure in LA, like we still got along great, but there were other things that would just be problems for us because it was a totally different environment and coming down to South Florida, our communication is 10 times. I mean, everything yeah. is happy. So it can be a place too, that changes your perspectives. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's, like I said, it's changed a whole lot of that. Like I said, her speaking English the better. Um, not to mention, like I said, being here with being here with their family, religion, faith, friends. Uh, Brazil's low and all that. Like I said, I'm doing whatever I can on the internet right now to make money, uh, to make trying to make ends meet, um, pay your bills, and pay your bills, and everything else like that. But like I said, eventually things are gonna be pretty drastic. Like I told you, explainers like, look, we can't keep two places. We can't keep places in Brazil and America. We're gonna eventually have to consolidate. You know, if we we stay more in Brazil, then we'll have to get rid of the place in America. Uh, if we stay in America we need to do is I told her we'll find a place that her family can live in and we'll get one room. That'll be our room. Uh, we'll store stuff there and then we'll use our stuff mostly to furnish the house. Um, and then we'll go there. We so often and visit for like one to three months. Um, but like right now we can just come to Brazil. Like right now we can in Brazil for like, you know, six months or whatever. Uh, we really need to get, she can only really stay here six months without causing problems for a green card. Plus she's going up for her, her 10 year green card renewal soon. So we got to get into cure that, which that's going to be a whole nother very expensive expense. Um, so like I said, I'm trying to make all these ends meet and like I said, paying for two different homes and paying for all of our bills and all of our expenses and our travel and all the stuff. It's been difficult. I'm doing whatever I can on the internet to make money right now. Um, and it's just trying so hard uh, to make ends meet. But like I said, it's terrorizing me of her because she was going to have the baby in Louisville. And then now she's here with a green card and everything else. It's difficult for her to get back. And she's very well. They found her green card, right? Well, they arrested the guy. The detectives. I was very diligent on on doing my own police work whenever the whole thing happened. Um, the activity. I went to the stores. I interviewed people. Um, they ID'd the guy. Yeah, you I just did. The detective. Yeah, I, they ID'd the guy. Uh, so they get information over to the, the, the police department. Uh, police officers arrested him while we were gone, everything else like that. So uh, I only had like 24, 48 hours to get the information that I needed because we were leaving. We were flying out. So I went there. The guy ordered something from Domino's Pizza. He walked in to order pizza. I went to Domino's, talked to them. They helped me out a lot. Uh, we went to our speed, like a gas station. I went and talked to them, uh, find some stuff out, you know, gave the information I could to get the law enforcement then finished up, stuff like that. But they didn't they recognize who he was, who the people were. Um, everything else, and they finally locked the guy up. They know he had his their documents, but we don't know where they're at. But right now, the the police are trying to work with him, trying to figure out if he'll say where they are. But he, I don't know. He probably won't. He probably isn't going to tell him where the documents are. He's probably not going to, you know, get more in it. But even though he's busted and arrested in jail, I don't know. Do you ever? For him. I mean, I'm curious because you know, it being the Amazon, and I don't want to sound ignorant because I've never been to the Amazon. I've never been to Brazil, but yeah. Are you ever kind of nervous that the crime could be different or you might ever be in danger in any capacity or no, you feel. Yeah. I mean, no, no. dude, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, man. There is so many murders there all the time. There's murders there constantly. I know my newsfeed murder, 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 murder. You know, it's like, my God, you know, and then they have the, 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 the you know, all the different, you know, 
people getting killed and different police reports. And then there's uh, the protesting stuff going on and everything else going on. And then protesters are getting killed. And then there's so much craziness going on. Um, you know, so like I here, I mean, I don't see as much murders as that. I live in a very high crime area. Uh, the, the gang or the cartel type thing, the criminal community that controls this area has set laws or rules or things like that. So police drive through, but they always see me. They tell me you need to get out of here. I was like, Oh, I live here. You live here. Yeah, I, I live here. And they're like, you know, like, what are you doing? And uh, even the film crew, we had two um, like federal security officers that were there when the film crew, and they're just like, we told you to walk on the street. You live on the street. Cause you understand why, why it's a bad idea. I was like, no, they explained to me why. And it scared the crap out of me, but I had no idea. But like where we, we're living and who we're living next to. Um, but the, you guys were the, robbed one time on TV in Brazil. We were robbed in a park. Uh, Karini had my cell phone out in the open in a park and she was robbed. She, they stole my cell phone from her with a machete. Then Octavio deflected a machete on his backpack. Um, only the Brazilian crew actually were directly engaged. Uh, the American crew was very lucky. Um, they didn't get anybody, you know, didn't attack them. They were, they filmed, they witnessed everything. Um, now the, the, they were very lucky. Also about a week or two after, um, that a Brazilian film crew was in the exact same park. All of them got their cell phones taken and all of them got all camera equipment stolen. So it could have been worse. All TLCs and Sharps cameras could have got stolen. All the cell phones, everybody's could have got stolen. Things could have gotten a whole lot worse. And remarkably, that whole incident happened. There was like six to eight police officers there. Plus, we had two security officers there. And they still ran up and got her with a machete. It took off. And then with many gunshots, as I heard them fire, I'm surprised no one got shot and got hit. Uh, on a funny note with that, over a year later, I'm going through my stuff. I think it was my Samsung Cloud account. And I see these random pictures. And what are these from? And then Karine says, oh, you know, the girl that I'm like, no, I'm trying to figure what these are. She's looking at them. And then we figured out what it was. The person who stole my phone, my phone was still tied to my Samsung Cloud account. All their photos are being uploaded to the cloud. So they were taking pictures of like Brazilian bank cards uh, of other cell phones. They had a picture there where they were taking pictures like selfies laughing. They showed somebody else's, not my phone, somebody else's phone where it said they were trying to track them down, figure where the phone is. And they're like, ha, 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 So the thieves who had my phone um, we're doing selfies and stuff and taking pictures and sending my corp and everything was being uploaded to my cloud. This is over a year since the crime was committed that I saw all these. So the footage, the photos probably couldn't have done any good to the police department. They probably couldn't have done anything with it. But I thought it was quite, you know, I was shocked. It was kind of comical to see, you know, where my phone went after it left our hands. And eventually, you know, as it traveled from person to person to person for a long time, I don't know how they didn't turn it off, but for a long time, that Samsung cloud kept on upload stuff the google stuff they turned off but the samsung portion of it kept uploading everything which i thought was very 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 surprising i didn't even know it was doing it it was kind of cool see i this kind of it blows my mind because you really do have so, like you could write a book and i understand why you're on reality tv because there's so many different things that happen to you when you say roller coaster or you said roller coaster at the very beginning of this interview i was like i want to know the highs but i also want to know the lows and i see where yeah. you could just go like this we, we had some really bad lows well um, i'm not even talking about with you and Karini, just personally i just mean in general with like filming and encounters and the move back and forth and the stealing of the green card. It's like, you guys have had a lot happen. Yeah. We've had some, like I said, extreme lows. Like I said, we've got some lows. Um, like I said, even during production where production got shut down. Like that's one thing with TLC and Sharp is they want everybody's mental health to be good. They don't want, they don't want to promote drama and bad things in that bad regard uh, where it is bad for someone's mental health. They shut things down immediately. Um, I don't think so. Like I said, we had one incident where, involved was a setting down production and going to a mental hospital and they just stepped back and let us, you know, kind of, you know, let people recover and heal. Um, and then we've, we've came here since then and, um, they, her family has been helpful and everything else. We've had some very, 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 very dark times, very bad things happen on and off camera. Um, and you have a lot of positive coming up. Do what? I said, you have a lot of positive coming up. Yeah, a lot of positive things. A lot of things coming up, you know, with Ethan and everything else. But like I said, I will say that I'm very thankful that, you know, like with the tell all, we had some stuff started right when the tell all was filming. We we're going ready for that. And they were nice enough uh, to say, hey, look, you guys, you're going through a lot of drama and stress right now. We want to give you some time to have some space so you can deal with some things privately. 
They didn't send out a camera crew. They didn't say, we're going to film this. What's going on? Da, 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 da. Hey, all about drama and ratings. It wasn't about drama. It wasn't about ratings. It wasn't about, you know, trying to get that number one spot on the TV thing. They, they stepped back. They didn't document it. They didn't bring it up. They allowed right. us to privately deal with the stuff. And um, space. yeah, we needed it. It was, it was some really dark stuff going on and it got really bad. And I told him, thank you. Thank you very much for allowing us to do that. So we could, you know, heal and recover. Um, and like I said, some people, you know, think that they're all about, you know, trying to like create drama and create problems. Um, no, they, they try to deescalate things a lot more. They don't, they don't try to promote things like that. You know, things happen on camera. Um, you know, it does make it on the show, but I mean, there's a lot of things they, they take out a lot of things they, they do, um, which is for everybody's all in all is mental health. It's for the best. Um, but the fact they're willing, you know, to step back and give us space when we, when we really needed it and not worry about, you know, trying to get those the drama, not trying to get that TV ratings. They were more, you know, worried about, you know, our mental well being. Um, I was very, very thankful for that. I was very appreciative um for them doing that you know um and, yeah so they still you know they still contact every now and again check on us and things like that and we appreciate that but they they've given us space they gave us the time and stuff to kind of heal and recover um which i appreciate and i said whenever we do go back right now because of covid it's we can't film here with COVID hey. or yet. anyway you just no way coronavirus no filming going to hang up in here uh, we have a brazilian crew that we only film with and things like that but they got so many things going on it's ridiculous too but they they allowed us to have space and now that we're in Brazil, it's just the family and everything else. It's, I'm so thankful. I miss my yeah. family very much. I really do. Um, like I said, I'm wearing the shirt my dad gave me and everything else. And he's, he's blessing. I wish I could be there helping him out. I feel bad because I really should help him out on the farm a lot more. He's got problems he's dealing with and I could be there helping him with his. Um, but you know, I, I got to make sure my wife and children are in a good place first and everything else. And, um, when I get back, you know, I'll be doing things I'm still doing on the internet, lots of things full time. Um, it's going to be difficult. Two kids now. I know Korean always want to have a daughter, so you never know if another kid will pop in in the future. Not anytime soon. <laughs> Not anytime soon, but still, I have two kids and a wife. It's going to be very difficult for me uh, to deal with all that. So yeah. hopefully, it, it'll be all right. You know, like I said, when she was in America, things were getting sad. So I had to, I did the stuff on the internet to work. I did some other stuff around the house. I did some cleaning, the cooking. I helped. I did up things with Pierre. And she was currently just staying in the bedroom. She was just sad in a really dark place. Um, but now, you know, she's here. She's her family, and things are just. She's happy. Yes, a little better. Yeah, more so than before. Now she misses America, and she wants to get back. But you know, she's she's got a lot, a lot more, a lot more, a better environment for her mental health. A lot better environment for me. I can talk to a counselor and therapist. That's fine. I'll talk to counselors and therapists anytime. That's not a problem with that. I don't know, I'll talk to people for mental health and therapy. Um, she wasn't keen on it. She right. didn't like it. So with her family, they can get out. Now, occasionally she, she would get mad. She, she'd block her family and not talk to them. She'd get mad. Um, but I mean, they're family. So she's going to unblock them. She's going to talk to them again anyway. Um, and it's you know, probably an easier, more organic conversation for her with her family. Yep. And they can just come here and just walk in and sit on this couch right here. And like her mom sat down for, we had a, we had a huge problem happen. Never hit social media. I didn't put on social media. Um, the old me would have threw it all over social media. We had a huge problem come up and it, it tore me up and it shattered my heart and it really messed me up really bad. It psychologically really messed me up. So I went and talked to her family and said, look, this is going on. This is a problem. They were in shock. Um, they came over and talked to her and they helped us get in a positive place. They helped us. They helped fix the situation and made sure that everything was right and we were going to be okay. Everything was all right and good and got things going better. And they helped me. They helped her. And we're in a good place. No social media drama, no problems. And things are going good. But, yeah, the whole thing that happened is I, I found out some stuff in discovery and it, it messed me up pretty bad. Uh, so I'm in, I'm in a whole lot better place now. No, I listen, it sounds like you are. And, you know, I, I don't want to obviously keep all of your time, but I'm curious. Um, I always like to end my interviews on a positive note. Um, and I feel like this has actually been a really great, it doesn't, it just feels like this is a conversation with buddy, to be honest with you. But I, I have two questions for you, if you don't mind answering them. Okay. The first one is, if there's something that we don't know about you and you wish we did know, 
I mean, if you haven't already shared, is there anything that comes to mind? What, something that people don't know about me that... You wish we did uh, know. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think. There's so many things in my, in my past, and they also went crazy and everything else. Um, had a lot of wacky things happen. Um, but maybe something good that we don't know. Things in my past. And things, uh, my mom's messaging me. Yes, mom, you see me. I see you too. <laughs> She's texting me. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. How you doing, mom? Love you. Hope you're doing good. Hope your heart's doing better. Um, I mean, I had a lot of crazy times growing up. You know, uh, I did. And uh, but one thing I will say, I, I really appreciate it too. Is you know, my my parents they got married. Um, my uh, my dad was 17. My mom was 18 when they got married. They were high school sweethearts. Um, they're in their 60s now, you know, and not everybody, you know, not everybody, you know, has parents that, you know, get married and stay together, you know, the entire time and everything else. And that's one thing I've been very blessed with. You know, Karini's parents um, actually got divorced a long time ago. They lived together and they, you know, stayed, you know, coexist with the kids. Um, I had no idea her parents were divorced. I had no idea they've been divorced for a long time. I had no idea all the story from her backstory. But like to my parents, they've they've always been married. They've always been supportive and everything else. So do you I feel like that to... keeps you wanting to work on the relationship because you had such a great influence? Well, seeing you see people that you know get married and everything else, and when I got told Karini, when you get married, you know, it's it's really something, it's a commitment, you know, and you're gonna have ups and downs. And so many times that people have problems in a marriage, like they think it's like a relationship. Oh, this, we'll just break up. I don't find somebody else and everything else, you know, um, which is common. You know, I was in the military for a very short amount of time and people got married and divorced in there all the time. It was like when you dated, you got married and then divorced. That's how it was back then. I don't know. It is now. Uh, but no, you see it, you get it. It's a commitment. You know, you have your ups and your downs. You have situations you come up with, you know, things get difficult. Um and you just got to work through things, communicate and get through it as a family and not just, you know, just give up, you know, and go out of it. Unless it's like a, a very serious, bad situation, then, yeah, at that point, then, you know, it's probably best to separate for you and, and you know, your spouse, right. kids, everything at that point. It's really bad. Um, but if just different becomes, things. Which makes sense. Do what? I said if it becomes toxic, then, yeah. Oh, yeah, it makes- becomes way too toxic. I mean, like that. Um, it does. And then, like I said, with her. Uh, Karini's an amazing person. You know, she really is. Um, I love that you said that because we don't know Karini too well. Well, the only time she gets really toxic, um, now, right now she's pregnant, so she's not drinking. Um, But um, the only time she's ever been toxic is when she drinks. Other than that, she's not really. As are a lot of us. Yeah, other than that, she's really a a positive person. She, She typically, she very, very, very rarely lies occasionally she will lie and i'll catch her a lie and it, it shatters my heart um the evidence comes up and i find it and then she tells me the truth but it's rare i mean very rarely very very rarely is she lie. when she does lie uh and she lies to protect me to make me so i don't get sad um or i get hurt but um she 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 very rarely very rarely does um very rarely but only she does usually protect me so i don't get like really upset or sad about something uh i guess if you say like white lies i don't know no that's <laughs> cover it but no, that's so, we, hey we can we can leave it at just we'll say that karini is an amazing woman right now she's pregnant yeah, with her second she beautiful she's child. An amazing person she's yeah. absolutely an amazing you person have a- First of all, Pierre, everybody in the chat is obsessed with Pierre. So you have another coming. Pierre's been a blessing. He's he's cute. He's fun. That was whenever whenever I got back from Brazil and I was in Brazil. So Karini left the house. And I thought maybe I didn't know where she was. I was hoping she was still like middle school somewhere getting help. Um and I had no idea where she was. So I went to Brazil and then I found what was going on and then I got her back at my house. She's just using my house by herself for probably maybe about a month. Before I got back, so I didn't see I didn't see Pierre uh, or here they say Pierre he and they say it here in Brazil, but I didn't see him for two months. So I was like, he's not gonna remember, remember me. He's not gonna recognize me. Well, Crane even said like he see pictures of me, he would hear me. You know, he would always get really excited and try to look for me. And when I mm-hmm. I went in there, I brought a I never forget. I came up, taxi left. I brought my my, my my luggage up, and then I had a thing a cooler. 
that I had all my Brazilian fishing, which is remarkable because we went through customs and everything. They said, oh, what's in that? I was like, oh, it's fish. Like, all right, we're good. I'm like, you want to go through it? Like, no, we ain't touching that <laughs> the fish at all. But I put down the fish chest right there uh, next to the, uh, the door. And the, the next thing I know, he runs up and he looks over and sees me for the first time in two months. And it was like a little kid seeing Santa Claus is the best way I can put it. And he just got so excited and runs up to me and everything else. And it was such a heart, you know, heart with thing. And since then, like he wouldn't let me walk away. If I walked out of a room, he would run after me. Uh, he was like really attached. Like he didn't, he was scared. I was, I was going to be gone again. Like I wasn't disappear. So that's one thing he still does. He has a, a, a lot of times he'll have separation anxiety. He had real bad when I first got back uh, where it's like, and I was away, he would cry and get upset. And uh, it really was touching to me because um, I thought he'd forget who I was. He didn't see me in two months. There are all these other people, no you know, maybe he don't know who I am anymore. Um, hey, but I have a feeling if he ever forgets, you'll be right there to remind him. Yeah, that's true. You're, you're like me. You're you. I feel like we both have kind of that <laughs> the gift of gab. We both talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I do have a bad habit of talking too much. Uh, no, no, no. I have a bad habit of talking too much. So, that, hey. That's not actually, it's better than, I mean, you don't want to be reclusive. Typically, normally I am. I, I usually, I'm normally talkative. And in real life, when I first meet somebody, I'm usually very, very quiet. Um, until like, I get to know them or I open up. Like we talked previously, we talked previously, so I helped out. But normally I'm a lot more of a quiet person, more reclusive person. Um, but I'll open up and talk um, when I can. That's one thing people too. People they always think, oh, Paul's going to go crazy. Paul's going to do nutty things. You know, um, I'm not proud of my past, man. I'm not proud that I was incarcerated or anything like that and any of that stuff that happened. Um, well, no, but we all know, just to be fair, we all know all of the, the negative things that have happened with you. And we've seen things play out on TV. And we've, we've had you kind of tell us more on social media before. But I, I'm curious, in a positive direction, what is something that you're most excited about in the future? There has to be something. I think being a dad is going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with that, bring out new things like that. So I think being a father um, is going to be a lot of hitting, fun. Hitting that five-year wedding anniversary and giving Karini the fairy tale wedding. I'm hopefully for that. Um, hoping for that. Karini has been changing every day to more positive light, which is helping me change too. So yeah. she's becoming a different person. She's not that same person people saw on TV anymore. Yeah. Um, she's a different person now. Well, I'm sure you guys are learning and growing with each other every day. Oh, yeah. She's grown up a lot. Uh, like today and everything else is going around me, productions like that. I told her, she's like, you really told her today. I said, I'm proud of you. Uh, you know, I, I, her, I love her. I'm proud of you. I really, you know, I see what you're doing. I appreciate you. You're, you're being an amazing wife. You're being an amazing mother. You know, I'm seeing everything she, she was doing around the house. And said that today, I, I, I tell her, I come her. This is great. You're, it's really positive. When she shows, she cooks. Whenever she does cook, her cooking is actually really good. She's actually a really good cook, but she's always shy. She don't want to always kind of cook. When she does cook, it's actually really, really good. And when she, you know, helps me out with things, she's actually really good at it. Um, that's why I always wonder. It's like, why well, I get sad and depressed? And then when, you, when, you, when she does something, you know, she's really good at it. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty or things like that either. Um, she'll get into something. She'll break her nails. She'll, she'll get into something. She'll get things get rock and rolling. But, you know, when she's in a good place, man, she's productive, she's wonderful, she's positive, she's uplifting. Um, it's a whole lot of positives when she's in a good place. But, you I know, that. yeah, that's the main thing is trying to always stay in a positive place. I'm glad to be here with her family and everything. Um, her brother and cousin. Like happy. Here. Huh? I said it seems like you're happy. She's happy. Yeah, we're in a lot better, happier place, everything like that. And, um that's the one thing it was in America. It was just getting to a point that it was just getting way too toxic. Um, there was a lot of toxic fans that were actually getting too involved, way too involved. Um, they, it was like Vigilantes, like creating legal problems things like that. So we had to get out of that. Um, yeah. We got out of that. We got here. Um, I haven't had any Brazilian fans do anything like they did in the Amer you know, the whole thing in America. I never had that happen there. The stuff that happened there was just off the wall, crazy, utterly insane. Um, getting away from that, getting here with her family, um, being positive. So we're, we, I miss Christmas. I miss being with my family there. I really do. I really am excited uh, 
to get back. I said the next year she's excited for doing Thanksgiving. She wants to do Thanksgiving. She wants to do all that. Um, you know, and we're going to have some pasta. I always want to go to Disney with her, but COVID happened. So eventually when I get things going financially, get things rocking and rolling. So our income going strong. Uh, her dream is like I told her while she's here, uh, what I want her to do to be productive is I have like some different tasks for Karini. Um, I want her, she's going to finish her schooling. So she gets her, basically her equivalency of a high school diploma. She's going to finish that here while we're here. Um, I'm also going to help her, you know, I told her I'll pay for driving school to get her driver's license here. So then we can try to transfer that driver's license to the United States. Um, so she can drive a car so she can go to and from, she wants to go to cosmic, I think cosmopology, the makeup school is it cosmopolitan. What is it? You know what I'm um, talking about? Uh, yes. You know my, about, right? Yeah. My, st the, yeah. The, um, I don't know. The makeup school, cosmetology or whatever it is. Cosmetology. She, Thank you. Yeah. I think it's what, yeah, she wants to do that. That's her, that's her, that's her dream thing right now. She really wants to do that. So it's like, you're just going done, get your driver's license and you get back, you can drive yourself to and from school. Um, we'll get a good, you know, if I'm have to work at the same time, mom can't watch the kids, we'll get a daycare, but you know, that way you can get out of the house, you can get in the car, you can drive, you can, you know, go to and from where you need to go. If you go to the store, you can go to the store. You want to go, you know, get yourself some Taco Bell or Burger King or McDonald's, whatever you want, you can go get what you want to eat. Um, the freedom to get out, um, to do that stuff. Mom says, thank you, by the way, Adam, uh, Send me a text. Say thank you. Um, but that way she can get out. She can she can actually see stuff, you know, and do stuff and have that thing. Um, so there's no argument about like I'm stuck here at the house. You have a car. <laughs> you can drive anywhere you want. Have fun, um, you know. But she can go to school, get her education, do her own thing, um, and have that type of freedom. I think that's going to be very good for her mental health. So she can't ever say like she feels like she's trapped. That's like no. I and mean, you can quite literally. Before she could walk, she could you know go on a bike, she could Uber. Now she can quite literally, she'll have a driver's license. She can get in the car. There's no argument on that. She can go to and from her school. She can you know follow her dream, accomplish her goals. And I think that'll keep her in a positive light in a positive place. Um, so those are things she can do over here: is getting her driver's license, getting her um, finish her high school diploma. Um, so she gets back, she can go right into you know applying for the school. She wants to go to the you know the cosmopolitan school. She wants to be able to drive back and forth. And right now, I tell you what, Manaus, man, I, I have never seen, I, I, I very rarely see accidents here. I very rarely see accidents, but there is some of the craziest driving I have ever seen in my life. I, it's crazier than New York City or anywhere else I've ever been, man. Anywhere I've ever been in my life, I've never seen crazier driving, but there's like no accidents. They, they're like super, they're like, they're super safe, but like super dangerous. It's weird. Um, but if she can drive here, I told her, if you can get a license here, I'm fully confident you'll be fine driving in Kentucky. Yeah. I, I really, I, I, I see the stuff here and everything else. I am fully confident on it. You'll be fine. Uh, you'll be fine. Uh, and mom, Pierre, uh, mom's like, where's Pierre and Karini? Mom, Pierre and Karini are down at Bonnie's house. They're eating some fish. That's right. Yeah. Eating. eating fish. Um, the only thing I don't like about like the culture here, I don't like it when they put Pierre on a motorbike and speed around, you know, with no helmet on. I don't like that. I'm really anti that. I don't like that. Um, there's a few things here like yeah. that well, culture wise that I do buck on a little bit, you know, them it's no, if them it's normal to put a, you put a baby on a motorcycle and you go 70 miles per hour, it's totally normal. And I've never seen a baby die, but to me, it's my son, you know, I don't want him on there. If he does wear a helmet, um, like on the boats, you know, we're always going to keep him within arms release that they don't have idea of a life vest for him now. Um, but they don't wear life jackets on the on the boat. Like I told her, if Pierre ever swims down the river with you guys, he wears a life jacket. Um, I have rules like that. So he didn't go swim in the river last time we were in Tony Cheens, but if he does go out there again, he's gonna wear a life jacket. Little streams, little creeks, that's fine. But in the big river, he's wearing a life jacket, period. Um, but like on the boats and things like that, you know, they they don't do that. Now I always have a life jacket on hand close by for me as an adult life jacket on the boat. So if he does something he does happen, I can grab that and I can go overboard and I'll go right over after him. So I always make sure I have them back on mind. Okay. Where's the life jacket? If anything does happen, God forbid something happens and I do got to go, you know, into this water, you know, where is it? What I got to do? And I hate to say that <laughs> we first got on the boat and I told her that I was like, I, I have rules here. We're he's on the rail, you know, watch him on the rails, always stay within range of him at all times. But I always make sure I knew where the life jacket was. So if I had to, I could grab the life jacket, put it on, and I can go over in that water. Uh, and right now, it's just now getting to be winter here. You know, it's intimidating here because the Amazon right now, it's at the end of the dry season, I guess you could say. So the river's at the lowest. Now, when the river's really low, 
piranhas and other stuff are a lot more aggressive. When the water's high and there's more food supply, you can swim in the Amazon. There's no problem. When the water's really low and the food supply is low, that's when like piranha and other aggressive fish are more of a problem, I guess you could say. Um, you know, I have never encountered the anacondas and stuff here. I've heard stories about them being close by. I've I fish for piranha. I've seen they can piranha, you know, take the hooks pretty quick. But you that's need one to thing fish for never... piranha on Mob Channel Three. What? I said you need to fish for piranha on Mob Channel Three. But yeah, I fish for I fish for piranha um, in between our interview on season one. They didn't film it. That's one scene that they actually wanted. TLC actually wanted. We didn't get a chance to film it. But I was bored, so I went out there and I first piranha. I was a black piranha. It was probably like, God, probably about that big. It's like it's probably as bigger in my face. It was a black piranha I caught. Huge, huge piranha. But I was going off the dock, just catching piranha, <laughs> catching piranha left and right. It was crazy. They just throw it out like a little bobber. It's like a little meat on a hook. Throw it out there. They just, they grab it like that and pull them right out. Um, it was crazy. And they were right there off the bank. And they were every time I cast out. It was amazing. It was scary. It was, it was kind of scary too. But then you get in the water, go swimming. You know, I was always scared looking around for anacondas and stuff, and I didn't realize how you know how many different types of piranha. Because there's there's black, there's red belly, there's so many different types of piranha down there. Um, and they eat that stuff up. And the other fish too. There's the uh, uh, Kuh is a really big fish. Um, Nacrini eats a tambaki, which that te- that that fish actually it looks like it has human teeth. I swear it does. But that's like one of her favorite fish to eat here is a tambaki. Huge, huge, huge fish. She loves eating that thing. I'm well, a talker. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, you you've overwhelmed me with information. I think everybody here. This is we can't fit you into to one sitting here, friend. We got to steal you for another time because you're you have a lot going on. But oh, no. I, I mean, just to be fair, we're we're pushing an hour and a half in. Oh, almost forgot. I know everyone's wondering about my dogs. So everyone knows I've gone to my dogs. My dogs are currently at the Pamper Pup. They're going through extensive training program. Um, I'm getting the, they're getting the ADA certification things done too. Um, but basically they're doing something that's never been done before. Like my dogs are very protective. So I'll, I told them I want to keep the protection ratio with them because they've saved our lives several times. And here recently we could have used them. We had situations here safety wise. We could have had my dogs here and I wish they were here because uh, they would have protected us. Um, but they're very good. They're very protective. But the, one of the things they're being trained on for their ADA is actually uh, for panic anxiety attacks. Um, so like, say I have a panic anxiety attack, they can detect I'm going to have it and they come up and start trying to calm me and let me know, Hey, you're about to have one. And as I sit down, they'll come to me and they'll calm me. Um, so that's one of their jobs. It's going to be with the ADA thing. Like I told them, I want them to be able to still be protective though, too, which is difficult. Service dogs and protection dogs are in two, are like polar opposites. They're two totally different things. Um, so I haven't, I told them too, I want them, the dogs to be work on their tracking skills. So if Pierre and Ethan get lost, I want to be able to, you know, have them be able to track down and find my kids. Um, if somebody attacks us, I want them to still be able to be protective like they've always been. Um, I want them to be able to, you know, if I have an off command. So if I tell them to stop, you know, to calm down, it's okay to have that. So they're doing a lot of intensive training with my dogs. But having a dog that does that kind of stuff, it still has being able to be protective and still be able to follow things on commands. That's difficult. Yeah. That's difficult. You, you, well, it I, sounds I, like a tall order to me. Huh? I said it sounds like a tall order. It is a tall order. It is. Um, but they've been doing great. The guy, uh, Tyler over there has been great. Um, uh, Christy and everybody over there has been really, really great. And I appreciate they've been great care of my dogs. They've been wonderful going through the training program. They're working, I think, more on the tracking thing right now um, extensively, I think, as well. Because they've got a lot of those stuff done. Um, but like I said, my, my dogs protected me several times. Uh, someone broke in here. There was like basically a home invasion here a long time ago and they attacked the guy and they drew blood. And then when he, he was drunk and everything else, when he went back past the threshold, they just barked. He went over the threshold again. They attacked him again. He went past the threshold and everything else, but they never attacked kids. They never attacked anybody else. They know they're able to sense and know, um, when Danger. to be aggressive, when not to. So they've never been aggressive when they didn't need to be. They never been aggressive to somebody that was being, you know, that it wasn't a problem. But anytime there was somebody that was a problem, they automatically, if they sense our fear, they sense everything. They they knew when they needed to, to do that 180. And then uh, when they flip German Shepherds, man, I tell you one thing here too. These these German Shepherds here in Brazil, I felt bad for the parents. They, the parents here were all like on a four foot chain when I got them as puppies. And uh, had them here, and they they 
this they have the energy of like a Belgian manganese. The, the German shepherds here have so much energy. They're smaller than I think the American German shepherds, but their energy level is very high and they're extremely intelligent. They learn how to open doors um, as puppies. So I took the door handle off the thing, put it on the table. Um, they took the door handle off the table, put it back in the door, and it opened the door anyway. Uh, incredibly yeah, intelligent. Super dogs over there? Huh? I said, what do you have, like super dogs over there? They got some extremely intelligent German shepherds over here. It's amazing. Well, I think what happened too was in the end of World War II, a lot of Germans uh, came here and they brought their dogs and stuff. And I think a lot of that, um, those World War II, I guess, German dogs, maybe they, I'm, I'm just trying to guess. I don't know. I don't know people. I'm, I'm just guessing on this. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But the German Shepherd line here is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So they're both, I brought here. Getting them to uh, America was a whole other challenge. And I had to actually Uber from Chicago all the way down to Louisville. And I had the best Uber driver ever. He didn't recognize me until like we were driving there. He's like, you look a lot like that call guy from the TLC show. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's who I am. You're like, that's me. I'm the guy. I'm the, <laughs> guy. the guy. But he had, his rule was, his first couple of Ubers canceled. His rule was, was pretty straightforward. He's like, look, I'll take you to Louisville. That's fine. Uh, but your dog can't be in there. He had a nice SUV with leather seats. He's like, the dogs are in the back seat. It's like, it's your car, man. <laughs> it's your car. I'm no problem with that. He stopped at a dog park. Uh, let me let him run for a little bit. Let him get some water and some food. Amazing Uber driver. One of the, I think the best Uber, the best Uber driver I've ever had. Uh, so that was a, a fun, fun drive down from Chicago. I really, I really uh, appreciate him, you know, for doing that and making things good. But yeah, they've been there. They've been wonderful. Um, wonderful dogs they're in training i'm very excited to get back miss them so much i wish they were here with me right now uh but no, now I, with the education work done i'll bring them back and forth it'd be easy yeah and like I'm, I'm glad too for all of those who are wondering about the dogs you you sum the dogs up oh yeah yeah. the dogs are, are like so they're in training they're getting training done they've been there for a while um they started this last training program like the first week of july they started, I think it was, this current thing they're going through. So they've been in training for a very long time. But from what I understand is they made a lot of progress and they're doing a lot of good stuff. So, um, and you know, he said, you know, this guy does a lot of stuff with the dogs. And I've had other people I've dealt with, uh, with canine dog training, things like that. Um, I talked to like Tucky and a canine and then Tyler, of course, from over a pamper pup, the working pup. Um, and there's detection, I think it's tactical, tactical detection canine, who's actual, he's actually a um, law enforcement officer uh, who's been a canine officer for God, many years. He served for the home uh, Department of Homeland Security. He served for the United States military. He served for newest police departments. That guy, uh, I've talked to him a lot. He's given me a lot of advice on training dogs, things like that. He is just an amazing guy to talk to, things like that, and the stories he's had. He actually had the dog. He actually trained the dog that found the device uh, that had, uh, that, you know, that Jared from Subway guy who got, they found all that porn stuff. He, his dog actually found the electronic device that had that on it. That was his dog he trained. So amazing guy, amazing stories. So I've been involved with the canine and train, dog training meeting for a long time. So it's really exciting for them to see this during my dog, do all this training. I'm really excited to see how it goes. And that's one thing I want to do with my dog at some point is I want to train my dogs on detecting cell phones and things like that. People was like, why would you do that? I was like, well, I'm not going to the reason why. Because it would be an idea of how I'm going to make a lot of money. Um, but, you know, teaching your dogs how to check cell phones has a lot of um, interest to a lot of companies and things like that, um, that you can go and get a lot of money per hour to go in these companies and do things um, with that type of skill. I'm not going to get into the reason why, because I, I don't want anybody to steal my idea, but that yeah. is one thing I'm going to train them on is I want to train them how to uh, like find cell phones and certain things like that. Um Maybe bed bugs eventually, but right now cell phones, I think, be the biggie. I think that'd be the big, really big money maker. So well, don't give your it. ideas away. No, I'm not giving the idea away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give the idea away. away. My, my, my ideas for my income, dang. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to give that, that whole thing away and what I'm going to do with it. Uh, but no, I mean, just I, I think they'll be good for it and everything else. If not, I'll have them there to help me with my anxiety and help me with my security situation. Um, I definitely feel safer with them around. Um, they've always, they, they don't back down for nothing. You know, they will, they would, I know for a fact they would die for me, Cree or my kids. I know they would. So, um, I love my dogs very, very much. I'm sad they can't be with me right now, but they're getting the training done. And when they get the training done, they'll be able to go to airplanes with me. They'll go to stores with me. They'll be able to go anywhere with me. So that way, you know, like I said, having the service dog capabilities, they'll be able to go in all these places 
where they, you know, service dogs are allowed, they'll be allowed to go in those places. And that's an extensive training program to go through to get that done. But also to still have that in the background, that little, you know, that, that security thing that they, they naturally have on their own, but that has to be controlled, you know, because you can't have a dog, you know, randomly go off on another dog or randomly go off on a person for no reason. That's dangerous and it's a huge problem. So it's like I said, the dog's been in training since July. It's a very tall request. Um, it's it's where most people say it's totally impossible. You know, I, I really have to faith that this, this training company will be able to do the impossible. I really do. I think they'll be able to pull it off. Wow. Really wow. Paul, I feel like I've learned so much from you today. <laughs> honestly, I feel like I've learned so much from you. I feel honestly like you've walked us through your relationship. You've walked us through your journey. You've walked us through filming, after filming, your kid, your new kid, your dog, your new ideas, and we're not going to steal them. Getting robbed, not getting robbed, navigating all of the crime, and yeah. your background, and we got to say hello to your mom. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the only crime we really had here, the biggest crime that happened here was when we came back the one time we got burglarized. And then we left here and went to America for the first time. We came back here. Um, they took everything. They took my digital scale. They took my clock off the wall. They took the microwave, the blender. They took the most random things, man. And it was beyond me. But at that point, they took so many different things out of here. Um, that really, that, that, that was our, the worst crime incident I think we had. We came back here. Cream was really sad and depressed, too, um, that that happened. But we've been blessed, you know, with being on television and everything else. We've been able to financially recuperate and replace all those things. But that was all it was. It was physical items they were able to place. Now, since then, we've been doing other security precautions to be safer and putting up cameras and things like that. Um, then in the future, we'll be able to travel with my dogs and stuff, too. But in the meantime, like I said, here, we have security cameras and things like that. We put in precautions in place. Her family's close by. Uh, the landlord's more involved. Oh, it's a lot more safe situation than it was then. But that was the biggest, I think, criminal incident that we had uh, happen here. Uh, getting She got robbed. Green's been, Green's been mugged numerous times uh, by gun and machete and everything else. I haven't. I've never been mugged. He's been burglarized very badly burglarized um but i've never been mugged and karini I, I feel bad for she'll walk out of a store first thing she does is take my phone she gives me her phone puts it in my pocket take my phone take my stuff she will not she will not leave uh a place and go walking where we walk at with her stuff she always has me hold her stuff until we get to a safe place to give her, her stuff back she's been shook up on that i mean that was being mugged that many times i mean it really it really affected her uh, and it makes her very, 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 very cautious now. It makes yeah. her very, very, very nervous and sad. Oh, wow. But yeah, and she's doing better though. She's side notes, um, little trivia things. Uh, Creeny, one of her things is just like calm. She likes doing, she does a uh, cross, not crossword, uh, seek and find. She likes doing coloring, things like that. She likes cooking, turning new food. Pierre, favorite things. Pierre likes um, apple jacks. Uh, he likes, he just, uh, he discovered strawberry and chocolate milk. He likes that. Um, she cream is excited. He's like he loves a Brazilian cereal. I'm so excited. He likes a Brazilian <laughs> cereal. And when I first saw this cereal, it's one of my favorite cereals too. And I couldn't stop laughing. But let me show you the Brazilian cereal. Give me one second. Let me grab it. One second. Yeah, grab the cereal. This, this is quite funny. So. This is the Brazil this is the Brazilian cereal that Karina told me he liked. This is funny though. You can see it or not. You see why I was laughing? Sucruchos? Yeah, but look what it really is. Sucrulos? Look at the mascot. It's frosted it's, uh, flakes. Tony the Tiger. It's frosted flakes. It's freaking frosted flakes. It's uh it's not a Brazilian cereal, it was American cereal. That's why In I a laughing. world that is so crazy, you just made it even crazier with Brazilian Frosted Flakes. <laughs> it's gross. No, they have a gen the generic knock knockoff of this is called Snowflakes. So they have Snowflakes. That's a generic. That's a generic knockoff of these things. It's, it's, they have next to it. Generic is called Snowflakes, but they don't have it called Frosted Flakes. They have it called Sugaru Sugarus. I don't know something. I don't know, but uh, I thought it was hilarious. No, I think I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that a lot of – you said a lot of funny stuff. Oh, I showed you the pool. Have you seen the pool already? Have you seen that? The pool? Yeah, have you seen the pool already? I haven't seen the pool. Hold on. I'll, I'll, hold on. I'll make the plug and I'll show it to you here. So this is comical. So 
Uh, some things in Brazil. I'll show you. This is a little intimidating. I'll show you a few things here that give me a little nerve wracking. So first thing is uh, all the ovens here. We have mostly our gas. This is our gas oven. Directly next to the oven is a propane tank, which ours had a really bad leak, but we finally got it fixed. So I always have the fear that we're going to explode or something crazy is going to happen. Next thing is in the showers here, they're all there's no water heater, so everything's electric heated. So we have wires directly above your head. Now mine, you'll see, has electrical tape on it, but you have you know bare wires right above you while you're taking a shower. To me, that's a little bit intimidating. Now let me go over here. This thing don't connect. I think the Wi-Fi should be strong if you be over here. Actually, the doors open here. This is the indoor pool. Wow. Yeah, we've got chlorine and stuff in it, but I'm not quite sure what the concrete is rated over there. I have no idea. But uh, it originally started as a joke because I mean, if, if you hit the wall over here, the entire wall will shake. You jump them down the ground, the, the ground will shake a little bit. So I was intimidated. I thought maybe it'd fall through. We, it started as a joke. Her family thought it would be a good idea. And I was like, all right, we'll just do it. Why not? What's going to happen? But it's been there for months. Nothing fell through, nothing broke. Um, her family absolutely love it. It started as this comical joke, but you get into a pool. And the funny story, I'll tell you, this is horrible, but it's funny. Uh, so when we first got the pool, um, like, uh, I guess her family went out to a bar or something and told a bunch of people, Hey, we got an indoor pool. We got a, the entire top level is ours and everything else. So I come downstairs and I walk out and I see all these like young club girls, like in club outfits and dresses and stuff. And I, I quickly kind of gathered what probably happened. Uh, <laughs> I think they went out. They told me, yeah, we got our indoor pool. We got this. We got that. So all these girls come back here thinking they're going to see an indoor pool and stuff. And the girls were here for like maybe less than, I think, maybe 30 minutes. And they took off. Uh, so I went down. I saw them. And I was like, I was a little confused because they were like oh, way overly dressed for the moment. Um, and the next thing you know, they were gone. Um, <laughs> I thought it was quite comical, but they, they loved it. They loved the indoor pool. They loved having a little gathering over there. I have a whole a section where there's family gatherings and stuff. So we're sure family has family gatherings all the time, uh, which has been great. And Creamy loves this in here, this, our little, um, television room, big blue couch here, which I got to clean this up, up here in a minute. And then I got her custom shirt made. Creamy's favorite game for like de-stressing is this game called Free Fire. That's like her favorite game. She loves the video game. Uh, the little, it's like an Android. Or no, and, I don't know. It's on a. It's a cell phone game. I get on the play with her now and again. But she loves uh, the game Free Fire. Some of the trivia things I can tell you. Pierre's automatic go-to when he's upset to calm him down is the hammock. I can go out there in the hammock out there. Any hammock puts him straight to sleep. No matter how upset he is, get him a bottle, put him in the hammock. He goes straight to sleep. Uh, what else we got going on? We got to fix our Christmas trees. You see, it's kind of mutilated here. Our trees kind of just slaughtered. No, um, it looks like a nice tree. We're working on getting some stuff. We're getting some stuff together here. So I get the shower and stuff together here. So we're working on that. Uh, so she's going to work on that more and get it more decorated. Um, we finally got a washing machine that heats its water. Uh, Cause before we only had cold water for all of our stuff here. So we finally got a washing machine that actually heats water. So she's pretty decently happy about that. Uh, of course me, I'm Mr. You know, OCD clean. So I got, I got all these little, I got air purifiers, these little things, total clean things. Her family had never seen an air purifier before. They had no idea what it was. So I got those throughout the house in here. Um, what else do we have in here? I'm trying to think what other things I could, I could show you in here. I am the only person in the building that has commercial grade fire extinguishers up here and over there. Then I got a hose That's attached important. to the main water tank. Well, things we're on the top floor and if the thing catches fire here, like we had a, a, a electrical pole catch fire here and the fire horn didn't come. So they said Amazonas Energy had to come out to put the fire out and they came, it took them like hours to come out here. The pole was lit up in flames. Um, the next thing I'm going to bring when I come back to America is I'm going to get a emergency ladder and I'm going to put it on my balcony where it can go down. So if we do get, if something does happen in the building, we're able to get down. Um, and like I said, more and more, if we do stay in the building, we had a recent neighbor move in. Um, they're not from Brazil, but they were, they were taking things in. I'm just going to say I'm from Kentucky and I, I, I've seen people, um, that let's just say I, I've unfortunately have witnessed people create meth labs, um, and get arrested. You know, it happens. You haven't, you have a crazy neighbor that decides you want to do something stupid and they get arrested and you can usually see what's going in. So I saw some things going in there that I kind of like red flagged to me. Like, you know, I don't want, you know, something exploding underneath me or like that. So um, we might, if things continue to go like that and things that happen, we might be moving out of here um, somewhere a little bit safer. 
So I'm not really big on uh, things like that where it's dangerous. Um, and like I said, that's one thing about Creeny too. Creeny is anti-drugs. Um, I don't do any drugs. She's anti-drugs. So um, her only thing like said, is at most would be alcohol when she's not pregnant. Right. Um, but I'm trying to think what else I can, I can really tell you guys. What else I can really tell you or show you around here? Oh, here's something else I got. So I'm really big on, as you know from gear, I'll yeah. show you something else I have, which everybody here thought was comical. So uh, besides the Bluefer baby here, it's the one thing I carry around being Brazil that her family was thought was kind of weird is this thing. This little thing that I carry around here. Have you seen one of these before? Um, I would be lying if I said yes. Okay. So basically, if I can get it on the camera here, this thing is actually called a de-choker thing. But this way, if like, say, because Pierre made me nervous, so he's, he's shoving stuff in his mouth. You saw him do cookies earlier. So basically, if any time he's choking, I put that on his face, I pull it back, it pulls everything out of his throat. Oof. So, so it's like a it's like a vacuum for your throat. So that way, if he's ever choking, I can just grab that and I can pull it out because he puts everything in his mouth. And like you saw him earlier doing the cookies. You know, I always got nervous on that. So I always try to overthink things. I think after the worst. So I was like, what if he's choking? What's going to happen? So I bought the uh, these little devices here. And they're, they're called the chokers. So that if anything ever happens, I can pull it out. Now, Karini, one thing she got, she loves to have around. She's paranoid. Is Ethan doing okay? So what she has for her little OCD is this. She's always checking on me. Oh, Harry that's checking for the... Um... Yes. He's always checking Ethan's heartbeat. Always checking Ethan's heartbeat. This is this is Creamy's kind of OCD thing here. Is I can get on the camera. I can get it. He's checking yeah. his heartbeat. It's hard to get the camera on this thing. She's always trying to check on his heartbeat. That's her big thing. Uh, Creamy's actually probably more. She's very worried about that. She's uh she's very worried about mosquitoes and stuff too and things like that. Um, that was one thing too. I will say surprised. She's very very nervous about coronavirus, like at the hospitals and in public places. I'm saying she's pregnant. But we were at her grandfather's party. No one wore masks. No one wore social. No one was social distancing, and no one cared. The man just turned ninety years old. You think everyone would be really, really nervous? He might get coronavirus, but it's been like I think two weeks since then, and he's fine. Everybody's fine. They've only had one case of COVID since I think they said June. I think it was I think it was in June. I think it was June. They've had one case of COVID since June, um, and they're not social distancing and they're not wearing masks, not doing nothing, which is just shocking to me. I mean, it's like it was the dude's. It was the man's ninetieth birthday. You know, occasionally he would put he put photos, he put a mask on for the photos, but outside the photos, he was never wearing a mask. Uh, so to me, it was just absolutely amazing. And he's 90 years old and he's doing just fine. Um, yeah, that to me was, was shocking, you know, because you see Manaus, you see like, you know, America right now, everyone's wearing masks, everyone's social distancing, everybody's, you know, no family gatherings, nothing like that. Where like these other places, everybody's doing family gatherings, everybody's going out, everybody's doing their own thing. And the hospital has, the hospitals are fine. There's no, there's, they're not covered with people. There's not people in their cover. Nothing like that. It's uh, not bad at all. Hello, David. I, I don't fi no file of Portuguese. David. <laughs> what did she say? What did she say? Mateira. Oh, butter. Mateira. No, no, no. Mateira. No, what is she saying? Mateira. What? Go. <laughs> this is David, by the way. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, Baba. Maybe it's Baba. Uh, he's ba oh, he's Baba. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's Baba. That sounded like Baba to me. He's not there. Maybe. Uh, you got it. Okay, thank you. David is absolutely amazing. He was actually one of the he's a, the, the hairdresser's uh, son, and the, the person that helped out um, was the production assistant. And everybody loved David. David's absolutely amazing. It's just it's been great. Um, and he speaks English really, really good too. Helping out, and there's my collection of apple jacks standing in there. So, see, hi, Dave. Yep, oh, I'm saying you want to say hi, you're on camera. Oh. Hello, <laughs> hi, David. Hello, he, he's here, he helps out a lot, and uh, he's been absolutely amazing. Like I said, I'm really grateful for him to come by and help us out as much as he does. He's been really, 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 really helpful, and his family's great. His like I said, his mom actually is the one who recently did cream his hair and nails and everything. So, wow. really great people, and he's actually. Making the bottle and everything. Crane just after the bottle, he's actually making the bottle and everything. So he's just been. David's he's helpful. helpful. He's extremely helpful. He helps out with the problem. He, we had the, uh, we filmed the other way and he was there during production and he saw the stuff. Cause it, during the film the other way, um, Karini was very emotional and she got upset. She, it was, that was real drama going on. We were filming there. 
And at one point, I didn't know she was in her grandfather's house. I went there to go talk to her mom and stuff. And uh, Karini didn't want me talking to her mom and stuff. So she actually talked to uh, production, had security throw me out of the house. Uh, so David was there when that whole thing happened. And then, uh, so Karini got on a boat, headed back to Manaus. And I was in Tonantins with her dad. <laughs> I was just in there with her family. And her, her mom and dad are confused, like, what's going on? I was like, so then Karini messaged me on WhatsApp saying, hey, why aren't you on the boat? Because you told the film crew you didn't want to be around me. So they had me on a separate boat and they had me on a separate hotel and everything's different. She's like, but I want you to be here with me. I want you on the boat. Come with me. I was like, you don't understand. You have to tell them. I like, I don't want to. It's like, no, you have to tell them if you want me to be with you. Otherwise, you ask them for me not to be around you to keep it separated. So it's like literally love me, hate me, love me, hate me, love me, hate me. Um, so David was involved when that whole thing happened. Uh, and you know, everybody in the film crew then was frustrated because then like, you know, in the middle of production, oh, I'm, I'm going to be around Paul again. It's like, you, you, it, it's hard to film and produce. It's like women, you, you hate like them. You very song, you're hot and you're cold. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, exactly what it was. And uh, so that happened and it was just kind of crazy. But uh, no, see, um, he was involved. He was there when that whole thing happened. We were in um, uh, Tan Sheen's, that whole thing situation went down. He was there. Uh, so he witnessed everything firsthand. Um, and it was very frustrating for everybody, you know, because how, how do you film that stuff? I mean, one minute she's one way. Next minute she's a full 180. You know, there'd be days she didn't want to film at all, which I felt bad for. And I, I understand why, you know, with the production crew, we'd have days where I'd be the only one filming because Crini refused to film. She completely refused to, to film. So they'd have, they have people that are, they're there. They're paying every day to be there to film us. And she would totally not want to film. Um, she's like a living. That's one thing I explained to her too. Is like, look, one thing about Karini too is uh, she's like a, a, a Snickers commercial and you have to keep her fed. So they actually had, they had a person um, that specifically had Karini's favorite snacks at all times. So if Karini looked hungry, they ran over and made sure she had food. Karini was the first one normally to eat, typically, whenever possible. Um, Karini's usually the, normally the first one. She'd have her food on standby, uh, and they make sure to get her food um, to get her fed as quickly as possible um, throughout the seasons um, because she gets cranky. And she gets cranky, she ain't going to produce. But if she's fed and she's happy, she's great, she's productive, everything. I and mean, that's me, too. I'm cranky. When I'm hungry, I get cranky. No, when I'm hungry, I get cranky. I, we all get cranky. And we all kind of get that way. All kind of happens. Well, Paul, this Thank is. You, Dave, I appreciate. I feel it. like we're we're about to approach two hours here. <laughs> two hours, uh, man. It's almost been two oh, yeah. hours, and I have two hours, Dave. Sorry, this huh? is insane. <laughs> but we do have we do have another live here in ten minutes. Um, <laughs> we took about time. No, it's okay. That's okay. I think this was great. We have, or I mean, hey, listen, I I'm glad that you were with us this much and just be able to sit down and talk with us. We got to meet David, yeah. we got to talk with Karini. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely not a problem, Dave. You you've seen the drama behind the scenes. Yep. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, listen, one day we'll have to get yeah. on David. Uh, yeah. We'll get David on here. We'll get your mom yeah. on here. It'll be a good time. That'd be fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Dave. I appreciate it. Paul, you've yeah. been amazing. I, I think everybody yeah. loved you. We love you. You're awesome. And you have my number, man. If you ever need anything, give me a shout. I will do that, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Seriously, man. We'll see you All soon. Right. All right. See you, man. Thank you so much. Of course. All right. Bye. All right, guys. Wow. That was an awesome interview um, for the Bottom Feeder Army. Thank you, Master Blackjack, for reaching out and setting this up or help setting this up. This was great. Paul got to tell his side of the story on how he's doing, how he's feeling, how everything's going for him. And it seems like he's on the up and up. There's a lot of positive coming for Paul, a lot of positive coming for Karini, and it seems like they're in a super great place. So let's continue to send them all the best wishes, the love and light, especially for their new baby. And we're just excited. We can't wait to see more. And guys, if you're not following Paul, or if you want to know what's going on with Paul and Karini, please head over to Master Blackjack Channel 3. Check out the videos. Paul's constantly uploading them. Master Blackjack is working with them. It's going to be great. And you know it's always going to be good content, uh, content when it comes to Paul. So thank you, guys. I just choked on my words for a second. Thank you guys so much. We love you guys. I appreciate it. If you haven't already hit like, make sure you hit that like button. And... Yeah, subscribe to Master Blackjack's channel, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, that way you guys don't miss anything coming up, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.